Hello, everybody out there in podcast land. Thank you guys so much for tuning into the show. This episode is brought to you by Transfuse. Transfuse is the only all-natural electrolyte drink that you guys need to have in your cabinets. We love this stuff. We've been using this for an entire season now. This stuff is amazing. I feel great when I drink Transfuse. I drink it every single day. I don't go a day without putting a packet of Transfuse in my water. It's very easy, very portable, easy to travel with, and delicious to drink, which means that you're going to love drinking it and you're going to drink more of it, which is going to be incredibly beneficial to your health has magnesium, potassium, sodium, which are all amazing for proper hydration. It has zinc, vitamin C, vitamin B, and choline. These things are incredible cognitive enhancers and immune boosting formulas that you don't want to miss out on, especially in times like this. I'm telling you, I drink Transfuse every single day. I love it. Tyler does as well. Anybody who has tried it has been just pouring with great feedback back to us. There's a reason that They're at all the NXL events, and a lot of the top teams and top professionals are using this product. Do not walk around dehydrated. I never realized how dehydrated I was, even when I was drinking all sorts of water. It's not enough. You need the proper nutrition. You need the right ingredients. Transfuse has done a great job of curating the perfect formula. Transfuse is absolutely spectacular, and for all of our listeners, there is a special deal for any Play the Game listener. If you head over to translabs.com, that's T-R-A-N-Z-L-A-B-S.com, and use code PLAYTHEGAME at checkout, you will get 10% off. If you subscribe, which means they auto-ship you your package every single month, whatever you want, whatever type, whatever flavor, whatever electrolyte formula you desire, they will give you an additional 11% off. So it becomes a 21% discount exclusively for all Play the Game listeners. Huge, huge shout out. And and we are incredibly thankful for our supporters. And um, if you guys would like to go support them, it's translabs.com. Use code play the game. We are brought to you by Heal Brand. Heal Brand is the best CBD company that we have ever come across. I've been taking CBD products for years now, and I absolutely love it, but Heal Brand has taken my CBD consumption level to the next next tier. This stuff is really the luxurious, high-quality, best brand that you're going to come across. Their whole claim to fame is the nanotechnology. It's the real deal. The claim is that through their nanotechnology, the CBD can actually break through the cellular wall and get into the bloodstream much faster and more efficiently, so you need less to do more. Often CBD products, you'll need to take it for a couple weeks before you really start noticing all of the benefits. With this stuff, as soon as you take it, you notice it right away. Within 15, 20 minutes, you're feeling the benefits of CBD. CBD is great for inflammation, anxiety, sleeping, all sorts of different stuff. CBD is really exploding on the scene because it has such a wide variety of benefits. I personally love to use CBD before I go to bed so I can get a full, well-rested night of sleep. Sleep is so crucial. It's so important. If you want to recover well, if you want to fight off depression and anxiety and those unwanted emotions, proper sleep is where you need to start. CBD products really help me do that. And Heal Brand CBD has a wide variety of options of different products, different formulas. It is all natural. It's amazing. This stuff is fantastic. You guys can head over to healbrand.com, check them out. And there is a, an exclusive offer to all of our PTG listeners. If you use code play the game at checkout, you'll get 10% off. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Lone Wolf Paintball. Lone Wolf Paintball is an online supplier that has been around for a very long time. They've actually been Michigan's premier paintball field and supplier since 1987. Now expanding into the online retail store, they are really trying to do their best to supply everything you need to the paintball community. They have it all. You get over to LoneWolfPaintball.com. If you want Field 1, HK, GI, Die, it doesn't matter. They got it. You can surf the website. You can check it out. They have what you need, guaranteed. And they also boast excellent customer service and same day shipping that's pretty badass you could go to the website order something and it's going to be sent out that day that's fantastic that's amazing customer service so again guys if you would like you could head over to lonewolfpaintball.com you could also check them out on youtube and instagram their instagram is lonewolfpb and uh, their youtube is lonewolfpaintball and you can see and keep up to date with all their latest deals their sales their content it's a lot of really fun stuff Play the Game Podcast is excited to have them on board, and uh, you guys should head over and become part of the community. All right. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by our favorite tax guy, David Roquet. 
it's that time of the year. It's tax season. Tax season is incredibly daunting. It's intimidating. It's the time of the year that you really need somebody on your side that understands how to get you the most out of, you know, everything that you've worked for all year. So having somebody that you are not intimidated to go and speak with and ask questions, somebody that's going to do whatever they can to make sure that you can maximize your returns is crucial during these times. David is an accountant and paintball player from South Florida with over six years of personal and corporate tax experience, and he has clients throughout the United States. So it doesn't matter what state you're in, he knows the legislation, and he's willing to do whatever he can to make sure that you feel comfortable in getting you know, the most out of your return and are confident that his filings are you know, done with due diligence. And I can personally say, so far, David has been excellent. We are so incredibly happy to be working with him with Play the Game podcast. He is doing all of the PTG uh, filings and tax returns. And so far, he's been absolutely amazing. You know, we have a pretty complex situation with Tyler being in Arizona and myself being in California. So he has been amazing at answering all questions and making sure that we are comfortable in filing this return. He's really good at maximizing your return and making sure that you keep all the money that you can out of the money that you earn. So why not go with him? If you have a small business or have thought about starting one, David is also there to help you out with understanding corporate taxes. Um, he can help establish your business, start up payroll, or help with bookkeeping. This is all really important stuff, and this is stuff that we're learning, Tyler and myself, along the way. Um, we need better techniques, and we're going to be using him going forward, absolutely. Let him know that you're a fellow paintball player and that you're recommended by us at Play the Game, and he will make sure to help you out for under $200 for a federal and state return. I mean, that's crazy. That's great prices. If you guys have gone to uh, H&R Block or any of these other places, they charge a hefty fee. It's pretty expensive to do your taxes. So we have somebody in the paintball community that is offering a great service at a premium price. And um, we hope that you guys definitely check him out. You can find him uh, at his email, drok954 at gmail.com. That is D-R-O-Q-U-E-954 at gmail.com he's fantastic check him out 100 percent. it is d k accounting that is his company that is his business this is what he does and he's here to help you ptg fam this is a legendary episode we've been waiting so long to get the one the only cash money todd martinez he is a legend through and through from the start of his career all the way up until now as a player and as a coach Todd is just one of the brightest personalities to ever play the game, one of the most dominant forces, and is now the head coach of Houston Heat. So without further ado, we're going to hop in this show. Hope you enjoy. That was an insane inside move by Marcelo Margot. Great communication. And the crowd starts chanting, Harmon. Great, great shot by all the guys. So Tyler Harmon saved that game. Came out with two wins. Marcelo Margot was on fire. All right, it's about time. We finally got him. Cash money, 858. Sorry, San Diego, I should know this. Todd Martinez, (laughs) my man, what's happening? Chilling, bro. Happy to be here. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Dude, no, thank you, man. This is uh, definitely going to be one of our favorites. Uh, You're one of the most iconic paintball players to ever play this sport stylistically and just with the flavor and the type of energy that you bring to the paintball field. So we're just stoked to pick your brain for a little bit here and talk about, you know, your history in the game because you, you're the, you're the godfather Mac daddy of this game. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're the one. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. I'm yeah. just glad that I'm still able to be around here, you know, to be part of the game, to be able to do something, to get to watch guys like you play and uh, be around the tournament paintball, man. I, I love it. You know, you know how deep we are in this game, how many years we've been here. And uh, I'm just happy that I can still be able to be around it, be a part of it, and be able to enjoy all the personalities and all the people and all the things that we get to do, man. Man, I mean, you are one of the best and biggest personalities to ever play the game, man. I I wish we still had somebody like you out on the pro field. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody will ever be able to replicate what you did out there, man. It was just iconic. (laughs) It was was so tight being able to grow up, having you in my backyard to look up to, you know, like, man, Tizzle, stoked, man. I got you on the show, bro. (laughs) I I appreciate it. But, man, sometimes, you know, like I'll be getting up for a game that I'm coaching and I'll go find Tyler and I'll be like, where's Tyler at? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'll go find Tyler and get myself jacked up. I'll be like, uh-huh. Tyler, I don't even play for like three more hours. I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. Give it to me. I want it right now. 
<laughs> Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Let them know. Truth. Let them know. We had, <laughs> dude, we had some fun night uh, out in, in Europe. I can't remember what city we were in, but we were, we were hanging out. And I'll never forget, dude, like this is when, you know, probably like five years ago, you inspired, you inspired me from a young age, like you, Oliver, um, and a handful like Chris, I watched him pretty closely, but your guys' energy and just the fire that you guys bring to paintball, that type of stuff changed my entire outlook on how I approached, you know, the game. And uh, I'll never forget cheersing you at the bar and just toasting it up to the wild ones, you know, having fun and playing paintball. And I hope to God that someday I can be, you know, still involved like you are, you know, and, and still be holding it down and in the mix and doing all the fun stuff. Uh, I don't, I definitely don't hope that I have to coach against you guys. Hopefully I'll be long <laughs> gone when you guys finally decide to hang them up. You know what I mean? But <laughs> you guys are the two mogul. really smart baseball players. Yeah. You know I and mean? you guys got a lot of game left in you. You know, if it wasn't for these bum knees I got over here, I'd like mm. to think maybe I'd still be playing, but thank God I'm not. Cause then I'd have to actually play against you. <laughs> But, you know, or maybe we'd be on the same team. Who knows? Hey, right? there maybe. We go. maybe. There we go. Hell yeah. Uh, I know. What a, what a dream come true that would be. And uh, I kind of want to just, like, pick your brain on on how everything's been. Um, where are you reporting live from right now so the listeners know? I'm at my house. Uh, I'm in San Diego. Um, I live basically right down the street from my parents, you know, having oh. the twins that just turned three. Um, I don't know if I could be able to do it if I didn't have my parents close by. They're amazing. They actually just dropped the girls off. Uh, they're downstairs right now getting their game on with Gina, you know, whether it be Legos or Play-Doh or whatever. Like these two might as well be two little Tyler Harmons running around my living room because they're just nonstop, just going, they're pumped. And like, they don't just like get tired and hang out, you know, they just like go, 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 go. And then they stop. Yeah. Back up, show time again. You know what I mean? 6 a.m. this morning. They were both awake, like, whoo, what's up? Let's do this. You know what I mean? I'm like, all right, here we go. You know, coffee, 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 coffee. All right, let's do it. I'm ready for another one. You know, it's relentless. <laughs> it's relentless. And and where do you think they got that hot blood from? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. It's definitely not my wife, that's for sure. She'd probably lay on the couch and sleep, you know, 12 hours a day. You know, while I'm running around, I get four hours of sleep and I wake up and I'm ready to go again, you know? Dude. Yeah, they're crazy. Rare breeds. <laughs> Here's like. It is. It's relentless work. Like you literally have zero, zero time off because, you know, you got to make sure the squad's proper. You got to make sure everybody's good. Uh, you'll figure it out one of these days, Marcelo. <laughs> yeah, 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 one day, through. one day. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. Haven't gotten there quite yet, but you know, God, it seems like almost every episode now we're talking about having kids and I'm over here like, yeah, huh. <laughs> what's, yeah. what's that like? <laughs> Yeah, you'll just, see. Uh, you'll yeah. just be patient honestly yeah. don't don't I'm yeah no rush y'all know yeah. that straight yeah. up because yeah. uh no rush there's no turning back when that when that baby <laughs> looks you in the eyes you're like all right i got you for life it's yeah. this is it <laughs> i'm i'm in no rush but i also can't wait you know what i mean it's uh 100 yeah. percent. i put it off as long as i possibly could mm -hmm. you know i think i was 38 when i, I finally had kids it's good age. and you know i'm glad that i waited because i don't think i could have handled them before that but I'm really glad the way everything turned out. Yeah. You know, what we're doing now. And, you know, you got beautiful life, kids. Life beautiful happened. fam. Yep. Yeah. So it's a blessing. It's great. So we, we actually saw you this weekend um, out at uh, Oceanside at Victory Paintball Park. And um, you guys were playing against Aftermath. Is that right? Yep. We practiced Aftermath. Um, we both went out there on Friday, but we didn't see any, we didn't see each other. Oh, no. Yeah. Like everybody's out doing their own drills, like checking out the field. You know, it's, it, it's cool because it's nice to see that, uh, you know, teams are taking extra time to get those extra days in. Um, yeah, I know aftermath was over there with their second team. Um, uh, Mike Hinman said that he wanted to, um, make sure that they got like the extra time in, but didn't want to have an extra weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, so they had planned on three day weekends, you know, for these two layout weekends and, you know, all my guys came in early and uh, they were in town. They drove down and we got a nice little warm up. We did a warm up day um, when we had that fun weekend in uh, San Antonio uh, last yeah. month. Mm -hmm. And it was great. I was like, yo, we should do that again. Go out on Friday and basically just like get a little warm up. We all got the brand new TM40 uh, mm -hmm. Tim Montressor Luxes. And so everybody wanted to get their guns dialed in and shoot some paint through them and get warm because you know, when you get that warm up day, you know, not really just like not really learning the field so much. It's just like getting your guns going, getting your body warm, you know, and just, you know, play a little 
you know, two on two, three on three, mm-hmm. just to like get the blood flow. And it feels a lot better going into Saturday. Yeah, mm-hmm. for so, sure. That's actually that exactly what fun. we did uh, this last weekend. You know, we, um, on the Friday, we just did a bunch of two on twos, three on threes, one on ones, um, that kind of stuff. No real uh, strict drills or anything like that. Just kind of get everyone back together, get the blood flowing, um, you know, get that chemistry going, which, you know, again, yeah. for you, I'm sure is, is a big thing as well. You know, gelling with the new squad. How you like it over there? You got a whole new group of guys to work with this year. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about this earlier. Um, it's so crazy how, you know, if, if you've been around for a long time, you know, you, you, you know all these guys, right? You know, like Sam, uh, Moorhead, Chad, mm-hmm. I mean, even yeah, yeah. You know, maybe not like, I haven't known Ryan uh, Smith and Devin and Nico as long, but I mean, Fedorov, Mishka, these are all guys that I've known for 15 years. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's crazy because, you know, you know, these guys and, you know, you talk to them and you hang out and paintball is, you know, really friendly. Like, you know, we all know each other. We all bullshit. And like yeah. after games and after tournaments, you know, we're a lot friendlier than maybe it was in the, you know, in the <laughs> uh, early nineties. Right. Yeah. And, you know, everybody's a lot cooler these days. And, you know, having known these guys for 15 years, it's like, it, it's, it's more me like coming into fitting in the flow of like what they've already been doing. But as far as getting to know the guys, I've already known the guys for a really long time, mm-hmm. but to be able to get to know guys as their coach, you know, as being on their team, you know, like just being their teammate, you know, you get to know guys even better, even deeper, you know, like mm-hmm. that's what I love about paintball is the players, the people, and, you know, and you get to know these guys on another level. And that's, what's amazing about paintball is because, you know, you, you think you know these guys because you've talked mm-hmm. to them and spent a lot of time with them for 15 years in different countries. But then when you actually get on somebody's team, you get to know them and you get to appreciate them even more. It's like when I got to go coach Breakout, you know, these last four years um, in Europe, coaching Archie Montemayor. You know, like I knew Archie. I've always thought Archie was great. But then when you get to know him and you get to know how he thinks and, you know, how he feels about stuff and his approach to the game. And then I got to coach Fedorov the next year and how he thinks, how he feels and like, his personality, when you get to hang out with them all day, that is the best, you know, like mm-hmm. I love players, you know, like you two guys, I've known you guys for a long time, right? Marcelo, yes, you know, sir. we're together on Infamous, but I've known you since you were a little kid, you know, Tyler, I've mm-hmm. known you since you were a little kid, you know, like I know so much more about you guys than just seeing you at the field and talking and, and bullshitting, you know, like that's what, that's what I love about paintball, you know, and so coming to Houston Heat, like really knowing these guys, but then getting to know them on that deeper level and having that appreciation for our relationships. Um, you know, it really means a lot. And these dudes are, they've been great to me and, you know, Randy and Danette have been great to me. And, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm really excited to get out there and do my job and have fun with these guys. Oh yeah. Yeah. You couldn't ask for a, a better group of people, man. Just astounding organization you guys have there. And you guys are, you, you know, like you said, you know each other already. So it's like just bringing that fire of cash money tizzle into the mix and, and having some fun now. <laughs> no doubt. No yeah, doubt. It's, it's got to be exciting to uh, to be with that organization as well, because obviously they're they're a top four organization, no matter you know how they placed last year. You have some of the deadliest weapons um, that you've probably coached in a long time. And like you said, you have coached Fedorov overseas with Breakout, um, but that's got to be really cool to be able to, as a coach, you know, I know I've, I've spent quite a bit of time coaching uh, divisional paintball now. And it's like, when you have weapons on the field, it's so fun. And I know you're that kind of coach, obviously, again, played against you for a long time, got to play with you, uh, play for you. Weapons are everything, you know, when you want to be able to do a bunch of different creative stuff on the field, you have to have the, the versatile weapons to do so. So I'm very, very excited to see what you do with this squad. Well, you have a company. What's your company called, Todd? weapons (laughs) 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 weapons <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah. i appreciate that yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> appreciate the plug 100 i see the, I see the weapons you, know, you can go there you can get stuff it's great yes sir <laughs> weapons.com yes, baby yeah i see that uh you got a, a sweet little shirt back there what do you got for all the listeners yeah. on- actually i also want to show you this this awesome. is my yeah, new um my newest line my latest jersey that i got it's made in the usa um yeah. i have two factories now uh, we make stuff still uh, at our own spot in Mexico, but we also make stuff in the USA. And uh, this is just one of my newest jerseys that I got here. Uh, Made in the USA, top quality materials, uh, top quality inks, top quality printing, and uh, 
turnaround time is less than 14 days. So Ooh. now I have, uh, you know, the, the pandemic has taught me that I can't have all my biscuits in one basket, you know, when mm -hmm. we got shut down for several months, uh, you know, I wanted to be able to set up production um, in more than one place. Um, you know, doing what I do has been, you know, a passion of mine for 15 years now, 16 years. Uh, this is our 16th year doing this stuff. But Congratulations, man. You know, no that's amazing. Way. I love making stuff. You know, I love designing products and, you know, yeah. trying to always stay ahead of uh, the stuff that we wear and, you know, to make it so that the player can feel the most comfortable and have the coolest stuff and feel great about themselves and play paintball and have fun. Dude, I know you're going to love this idea of mine. I think that paintball players should look like basketball players. That's my personal opinion. Like we should be wearing jerseys and shorts and then you have the pads on under your jersey or whatever. But I think that style would look amazing for paintball. I mean, I almost always do drills like that. I think it looks tight. Yeah. Seriously. That shirt that you were wearing this weekend, Marcelo, you got uh, you got that Blue Sense 2000 shirt. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen that one a lot lately. I got that one stuffed away in my closet too. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's hey. the OG, man. I uh, Someone, uh, shout out to uh, Haley out in Texas. She uh, mm -hmm. sent me that actually in trade for one of my jerseys. I was like, I don't think you know what this is worth. I'll definitely give you one of my jerseys <laughs> for this OG right. 2000 Dynasty uh, turtleneck. Yeah. yeah, I've been posting some of my stuff on Instagram, but I have two full bins of just my Dynasty stuff. Yeah, you know, I got some really, I got some classics. I got a dynasty hip towel. You know, Tyler will definitely throw yeah. that in there with the shorts yeah. and the, uh, yeah. and the <laughs> my short sleeves. We'll go hip towels. I got a dynasty yeah. embroidered hip towel from uh, uh, what was it called? Uh, who was that website? It's is it from the early <laughs> early two thousands? Yeah, mid two thousands. AOL dot com. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got it. Got a few uh, other ones in mind. But. Dude, I can't. So hold on. You said you have two two buckets full, two bins full of two dynasty. Two full Costco 27-gallon oh. bins of just dynasty stuff. Todd has been Jersey. straight up dunking on every single, like, these Facebook groups and all these, you know, quote-unquote collectors. I give them props, and they always post stuff, and I'm like, yeah, damn, they you, you really have the coolest collection. Todd has been low key just dunking on all of them the last like two months. I see everything he's posting. I'm like, damn, dude, you got all the good stuff. Like the I got real some good one. <laughs> I saved so I every tournament we won, I saved the jersey. You know, wrote the event on it, right? Put it away. Um, you know, all the jerseys that we used to trade people. Yeah, you know, I don't know if y'all still do this, but I would you know go and trade jerseys with my favorite guys and yeah. you know keep those jerseys and save them, right? Like some people get jerseys and sell them. You know, like. We never really sold jerseys back in the day, right? It wasn't until like, you know, like yeah. 2006, seven, where we finally like started getting jerseys and selling jerseys to make mm -hmm. money and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, you know, getting extra jerseys from the sponsors and whatnot. But we used so to get true. like free jerseys every event and we either give them away or trade them. And, you know, I got some really good uh, collector jerseys in my bin mm -hmm. that I still have yet to post up, but it's yeah. all from my favorite pros back in the day, you know, go, just goes back to what I was saying before, you know, like I'm a huge paintball fan. You know, I love mm -hmm. paintball. You know, I know back in the day, there's a lot of rivalries. You didn't only saw guys five times a year, you know, so you didn't really get to know guys. You stayed in your clique. Yeah. But, you know, now that we all know each other and play a lot and travel to so many different tournaments, everybody knows each other a little bit more. But, mm -hmm. you know, I was a huge paintball fan. You know, I'd follow all the, all the big teams, all the big players, know who guys were, you know, still geek out when I'd meet dudes and, you know, ask if I could get their jerseys. And that's how I got this big old collections. Part of the reason why I started the company is because I just, you know, love collecting jerseys, you know, being a big sports fan, like Marcel, you know, yeah. you know, how much of basketball and I got some football jerseys, you know, a couple baseball jerseys, but you know, I just love sports and have a big appreciation for the time and effort that players put into their craft. And, you know, it's really cool to look up on my wall and, you know, mm -hmm. see a Jersey, you know, I got Nikki Cuba right here. Yeah. You Nikki. know, Let's go. Right. You're hanging out with me every day. You know, I left this at my house and now I get to stare at his mug. Every day. <laughs> right. You know, He's Josh the best. Right. But, you know, I love players. You know, I love, uh, you know, having those collector's items that remind me of those times and, you know, the game and the people that, you know, contributed to it. Right. Yeah. The game has changed a lot, too. Like it's it's 2021. We're heading into 22, you know, at the end of the year, obviously. And the game has changed in the last 10 years. Like the, the characters, all of my favorite characters that I grew up on 
are, you know, pretty, I mean, besides Ryan, <laughs> are, are, and, and Alex, you know, um, yeah. and Yoshi, of course, but there's just, uh, there's so many of my favorite players that have, are either not in the game or, you know, not involved anymore or, you know, so it's kind of like, it's refreshing to see, you know, the OGs like you and thank God my teammates and stuff. And we still got like Rich Telford who's out there too. I love seeing him, Maddie, you know, all the dudes that, that raised Marcelo and myself essentially um, in this game. So it's, it's an honor to be able to, you know, carry that same energy that you guys passed on to us and start to push it forward into the new generations and keep that, that vibe going. And you're doing a really good job of it. You know, I see you guys off the field. Um, you know, I see you guys at the clinics, you know, traveling around and still doing that thing. And I got to tell you, I appreciate you guys do, for doing that. You know, you it's guys are really love. smart yeah. and you're really personable guys, you know, being able to go around and, and spread that love, spread that knowledge. You know, it, mm -hmm. it's very valuable to our sport and to our community. So, you know, I appreciate yeah. you guys doing that. Thank you, Tom. You too. Yeah. You too, Tizzle. You're out there getting it. I know you are. I think uh, really at the end of the day, it's easy, man. It's the same thing you said. It's something we love to do. Like I, I, yeah. I wouldn't want to do anything else, you know, being able to yeah, sit down absolutely. and have these conversations, go and share paintball uh, ideas and thoughts and, and knowledge with other people. I mean, I, I just, you know, we're all here because we're paintball fanatics, paintball fans. Yeah. We love the sport. We love the game. Always have. So it's, uh, yeah. it ain't no sweat off the back. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I got pictures like this all over my house. I don't know if you all can right. see this right here. Oh, you snap. know, there's me and BC, oh, BC. <laughs> you know, back in the day, you know, yeah. back before digital cameras, you know, you just take, uh -huh, uh -huh. take a, take a picture, go I'm get it developed at the store. I was going to say, know, but, I, I was going to say when, when you were talking about not uh, really being that close with players back in the day, you guys only saw each other, you know, five times a year. It's because you had to go home and like write letters to each other. You know, there's yeah, no Instagram, sure. no nothing. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Send a postcard or something. <laughs> so my wife was talking about that uh, with her friends. She's like, did you ever have pen pals? I'm like, yeah, I actually had a pen pal. I don't even know what a pen pal is. We need pen pal. Like, you're a pen? Like y'all got a pen and he uses it sometime and he uses it another time. No, you write letters. You take a pen and you write stuff on a piece of paper. You put it in an envelope and you get a stamp, lick that, uh -huh. stick it uh -huh. on, put it in the mail. You know, uh -huh. it's not just like, dear dog, what's up? Send. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> dear Doug. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, shout oh. out to Dougie. So, That's funny stuff. It's a whole new world. It's crazy. Um, yeah. <laughs> We're in the future now and man, it's, it's really taken paintball leaps and bounds, you know, being able to, to consume more paintball too. I feel like more people today are watching paintball and consuming it than ever before, which is the path we want to be on. And I think people, people need paintball in their lives, you know, these days, um, especially just because of everything that's been going on. Yeah. And it feels like, it, tell me, it didn't feel like for a time there, that paintball seemed like it was slowing down, like there wasn't many people playing. And right mm -hmm. now it feels like it's booming. It yeah, feels booming. like there's more events than ever. There's more mm -hmm. people playing than ever. The, the you know, there's more walk-ons, more people getting into it. Mm -hmm. It seems like paintball business is up. You know, people are actually um, buying a lot of stuff and supporting the industry. And, Absolutely. you know, that's great. That's great for all of us. Mm -hmm. Paintball podcasts are flourishing. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. You know, you got me on here, so maybe three people listen to it. They'll be like, I'm like ah, nope, Todd, turn it off. I'm willing to bet you this is one of the most, this is, this one's going to break records for sure. This is going to be one of the most highly watched ones we got, bro. Guaranteed. So many people have been like, dude, when are you guys going to get Todd on? Like, we, we're trying, man. He has a seat yeah. anytime he wants. <laughs> uh, I told you guys like two months ago that I was ready to go, and then I missed you, and I missed you, and I missed you. You it's know, and tough, I got man. crazy kids yeah. running around, so, yeah. you know, being here is always busy for me, but. I find, I'm glad that I finally got some time. I called Tyler. I'm yeah. like, yo, I yeah. got some time finally. Let's do it. So yeah. Here I am. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate we love it, man. Oh, Dude, of course. We got we to gotta know where you started, though. How did this all start for you, Cash Money? Where did the uh, paintball adventure begin for you? On the blocks. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, so I started... Uh, I heard about paintball and then I got like some paintball magazines, you know, back in the day, there was a paintball newspaper, shout out Josh Silverman, uh, John Amadea, yeah. you know, the, yeah. Yeah. the PCRI paintball consumer reports. It was a newspaper. Right. And then I got a smart parts catalog and I, you know, Rodney Squires, you know, looking, you know, like he's got a ponytail, 
you know, probably 20 some years old, looking hella weird, you know, all those East Coast dudes, right? I was, I was we just... all, in, all Americans, right? I was like all Americans fan, which is kind of funny because you know now I'm coaching the All Americans, right? Yeah. yeah. The, today's All Americans. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I was all into the smart parts, splash anodized auto mags, right? So uh, we used to go out to New Mexico because my dad's from Taos, and we had a farm out there, and we drive out there every summer. And you know, we go out and ride motorcycles. You know, I had a little big wheel, um, mm-hmm. shoot guns, shoot twenty twos. Uh, my dad taught us how to shoot guns when we were really young. And, um, you know, I heard about paintball and so I was looking at all these magazines and, you know, catalogs and stuff. And we found a paintball store when we were driving out to New Mexico one year, I think it was, uh, like 94, 95. And, uh, we stopped there and I saw a paintball gun and I was like, you know, I want to buy this paintball gun. So I bought a pump gun and then we went out and played, uh, at, we found a field, uh, in Albuquerque outside Albuquerque. And so we, when we went there, my dad went and rented all of his stuff and I had a brand new pump gun and, uh, we played one time and we both got hooked. Mm-hmm. I think it was, you know, the second couple of times we played, I saw a dude out there, uh, the original no shirt guy, right. <laughs> Dudes out there. There's always a dude that got to play with no shirt, <laughs> right. There's always one dude somewhere playing with no shirt on the dude's oh, out there with no shirt on shooting an auto mag with a vertical feed co2 you know people don't yeah. know about vertical feed co2 these <laughs> yeah. days right Everybody compressed air for 30 bucks these days right this dude had a co2 bottle imagine having your 68 tank on the yeah. front of your gun going up and down instead of on the back of it right and he's just out there just boom, 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 shooting people and i'm like that's what i want i want what no shirt guy has right so <laughs> yeah. you know we start we played for that first time out there and albuquerque got hooked and then from there on out, I, I was consuming every piece of paintball I could get. Um, the, the tournament, the NPPL was on my birthday, I think in 95 or 96. I think it was 95. And uh, I didn't get to go because I had like, had like a baseball game or something. My dad went and watched because he wanted to go see what it was all about, you know, the tournaments. And he came back and was like, man, that was the coolest thing ever. Um, you know, we're definitely going to play some more. And then we started playing like once every couple months. And uh, there's a local field here called Mr. Paintball. It's where I had Raza Park. Um, you know, I used to ref there back in the day, got a job. Um, we used to play at Velocity uh, with San Diego Paintball Park back in the day. Uh, now it's Velocity, um, you know, where Marcelo uh, grew up, you know, in the woods, mm-hmm. hunting fools down. And, uh, you know, we just got so hooked on it. We started playing uh, once a month. And then next thing you know is, you know, every, uh, every couple weeks and we we're cruising around playing this new field. I think it was called the pumpkin patch. And, uh, <laughs> there's this team called Marine team out there. It's a bunch of guys that were, you know, in the Marines and, uh, they're like, they saw me playing walk-ons and they were like, yo, we got a junior team. You know, you should come play for this junior team. And I was like, all right, let's do it. You know, and <laughs> within like a year, uh, I was playing tournament paintball and never looked back. I loved it so much. I had so much fun and, you know, it all wow. started with a, a paintball magazine and a catalog. And, you know, next thing you know, you know, I was playing both days every weekend for years and years and years. So See, that's how we got started. Me and my dad. Todd, wow. these, these, that's uh, amazing. It, it seems like almost every time we have someone on the show, a really prolific uh, player that's been in the game for a long time, it's a similar story. It's either a magazine or some, some sort of marketing thing that paintball used to do that we don't quite do anymore granted you know we do have social media we have stuff like this show which is great we have go sports um but that stuff it's just proven that it's so important to get paintball in front of the eyes of the masses because people do love the sport it's a great sport we have you know like i don't know anybody that i've taken to play for the first time that just said you know this this is just boring you know (laughs) i didn't have a good time Um, maybe people will say it hurts, you know, maybe they're a little afraid, but they always have fun. (laughs) Everybody always has fun. You know, it's such a great game. So like we need to be doing it. Everybody's got a war story. Yes. Everybody ends up with a war story. Right. Yeah. Uh And that's what paintball is all about. Everybody's telling their war story about what they did when they went and played that one time and everybody Mm -hmm. can relate to it, you know, Mm because everybody has so much fun. I wish we saw. I'll never forget. Yeah, I know, huh? Man, more magazines, more printed stuff that you could tangibly hold, you know, in your hands. Everything's obviously gone digital, but um, I think that there's going to be a resurgence and a big push, you know, moving into the next five, 10 years. We're going to see a lot more of that print start to come to life, hopefully. I I want to, you know, let's see that. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. But um, when I was a kid, 
I'll never forget. I was like 10 years old. It was in Modesto, cow pack, like out in the middle of the agriculture, you know, almond fields and, and cows crapping everywhere. And uh, <laughs> it was foggy, you know, it was foggy, super foggy. You couldn't see 15 feet in front of you, but you know that there's 15 or 20 people on the other side of that fog somewhere. And you just got to keep pushing through the fog. That, that stuff right there was like, at being like 11, I was just crapping my pants. I was so scared out there. <laughs> it was the craziest. That sounds scary. Today, <laughs> that sounds scary. I don't want to be creeping through the fog. <laughs> like, <laughs> bad guys yeah. on the other side. Well, Rich Telford was on the other side. So that's what made it even scarier, you know? Jesus. Oh, yeah. You had, to, you had to run through him. <laughs> Still a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> Still, Still a bad day. idea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't know if this is uh, if this is news or not. I haven't really seen it anywhere, but I guess Rich is going to be coaching NYX. That's pretty cool. Hopefully, hopefully yeah. I didn't. Uh, yeah, hopefully yep. I didn't I didn't yeah, that cover. That I feel great. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they they need that. They need some some like direction in in uh, you know from a serious coach that knows knows what he's doing is going to kind of you know halt the bullshit. Um, I love the antics from the N- NYX guys, but at some point it's like okay, now you guys got to start backing it up a little bit. It's getting a little old in my in my opinion, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, it just shows that they have a lot of energy mm-hmm. uh, and they have passion for the game. Mm-hmm. They beat good teams. They have, they yeah, hundred percent, right? And they can. And it's yeah, yeah. hard. I mean, you guys know this more than anything. The hardest thing to do in the league is to be consistent, mm-hmm. right? And there's so much that goes into consistency. A big part of it is having uh, a coach that knows what he's talking about. Yeah. It's having the same team. It's being able to practice a lot together. Uh, It's being able to go through things as a group and learn and make mistakes and grow as a unit. So to be able to get Rich Telford, who's been in a lot of those situations, who's been in every situation and has won and lost the biggest games, maybe he'll be able to show them, you know, to be able to go in there and assess what level they're really at when it comes to who they are and what they're capable of and what their strengths are and what their weaknesses are and be able to convey that to them because you know, Rich and me both came to the Ironman together, right? Mm-hmm. My first yep. tournament on the Ironman was also Rich Telford's first tournament on the Ironman. And I was just a kid that was really fast, that loved to play, that, you know, could, could shoot people, right? I didn't know about communication. I didn't know about teamwork. You know, I didn't know the fine details of all the things that are important to be a winning professional player. And Rich is the one that really just shot uh, communication into my head you know, yeah. game after game after game. And I was joking about it first because I was like, oh yeah, I went on the game. And I'm like, hey, how's your sister doing? You know, what's your mom's name? And he's just <laughs> like, you keep being stupid. I'll shoot you in the back of the head myself. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, okay, all right. So uh, what are we doing here? You know, but I think that uh, NYX, you know, having a team that has like some some talent on the team mm-hmm. and you know, good support, good backing, you know, and then that energy and passion for the game, having Rich come along, I think will definitely be good for them. And, uh, you know, probably, you know, start steering them in the right direction. So that'll be good for them and for the league. I hope, I hope they don't lose that flair though. I, that's my favorite team to watch pretty much, you know, like them and a couple others, but they just yeah. always bring that fire and it's entertaining and we need that for paintball. So I, I do think yeah. that Rich is going to instill, like Tizzle was saying, those good quality fundamental you know, prioritized beliefs in the game so that they can learn all of that together. But they still, like he was saying, you got to have that passion, that fire. That's kind of, you know, that's a big aspect of it too. But in the same token, we got to be able to back that up. And, and you know, it, it can waste your energy actually if you're doing all that. And then when you could be using that energy to focus and channel it into different areas so that you can be the best out there, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Don't Don't waste all your energy jumping around you know, yeah. being crazy, you know, when you need that, especially yep. late on Sunday, right? Dude, yeah. And You're gassed. You know, if they win an event though, it's uh, it's over for all of us. Yeah. So we'll never- <laughs> <laughs> right? All they all they need is one. If they win one event, it's it's yeah. over. It's yeah. a wrap. <laughs> yeah. I'm rooting for you guys. Go get them, yeah. New York. I, I know, yeah. Go same, <laughs> same. I, uh, I love New York. Um and uh yeah, yeah like they are fun to watch for sure. Um mm-hmm. I, I think I think it's not so much even the physical energy though too that mental energy and this is something that you know i've Mm. i i know very well um 
you lose a couple points, you, you go from being way up mentally and emotionally to being way down on yourself and your team. And you get into this like downward spiral. Um, you, you know, so you gotta be able to channel that as well. Um, I think, I think what you're right, Todd, Rich is going to be fantastic for all of that with him. Yeah. So, discipline, yeah. right. Yeah, that, uh, 100%. martial yeah. arts discipline. Yes, absolutely. Speaking my love language right there. No. And and that's that's sensei rich to you, New York. You know what I'm saying? That's the sensei. He's the, the godfather. <laughs> He's the I was one. telling somebody this the other day. Uh, we were at a tournament, uh, I think last year, about last year, year before. And uh, Rich walks around, you know, tries to fool everybody like, oh, you know, I yeah. can't really move. You know, like yeah. uh, body is it's broken. <laughs> you know, I can't move very well. But then I was like standing behind like in the booth and I looked over the netting, right? You couldn't see me. You know, those bleachers, those sets of bleachers that are like five high, you know, so they're probably about, you know, about my head level, right? Uh -huh. There's a can, like a can of Coke sitting on the top level of one of those bleachers. And Rich Telford was walking by and he sees this can right here and he couldn't help himself. He just spin kicked that thing, <laughs> kicked it straight off the thing and just kept walking. And I was like, no way. I'm kidding, dude. I was like, no, I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> Saw that. Saw that. as he was hiding yeah <laughs> dude still you got it. it don't let him fool you i That's hope harris is saying say something stupid you know give him the spinning back fist to the face and then karate kick the goggles right off his head that's great as long as somebody gets it on video or i am personally there for it that would that's be it <laughs> he's not to be messed with he's not no, to be messed with <laughs> <laughs> I remember hearing stories like when I was a kid, you know, and like, be, be afraid, be, be afraid yeah. of the Telford. I always is... was growing up, you know, Rich yeah. was like, yep. you don't, don't talk back to that man, you yeah. know, show your respect. <laughs> That's it. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Harris. Harris, talk back to him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it'll get juicy i like He's it we need man. a they need a film crew on that team alone they need a documentary this year yeah go yeah. you know, where you at that's what yeah. i'm talking about See, yeah that i would watch yeah i would, I would watch, watch. <laughs> i'm signing up you know? for yeah. sure, for no sure. that's the kind of stuff that i feel like we need more of right just the lifestyle and the the off the field stuff within the teams because i think that's the stuff that keeps all of us so interested obviously competing is, is number one, but like the brotherhood and the, the dynamic of your team is that's the stuff that is like really exciting. It's really fun traveling to events, how, how everyone interacts with each other. And I think that yeah. team would be especially fun to watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of these teams, right. Yeah. You know, right. some of us, some, some teams have been together for a long time, right. Some teams have been together for a long time and it, you know, it's the same, you know, the, the new year, you know, same challenges right but there's some teams that are you know still grinding and fighting and trying to get their way to the top but you know with all these personalities you know and interesting mm -hmm. people and stories mm -hmm. like there comes times like that where it's like an nyx gets a rich telford right mm -hmm. that would be exciting to see like how's he gonna go in there how are they gonna react to it you know what is he gonna do to you know try and help these guys reach that next level because like i said they have beat good teams you know, I remember yeah. they played us, uh, you know, on the Ironman, tons of really good games, right? I played them when they were the Jesters um, and uh, the Outlaws, you know, when I was coaching Vicious, right? They they got dudes that know how to play. And some of them, like Harris, just get away with ridiculous shit that they shouldn't <laughs> get away with, you know? But if they can channel it and focus it and figure out how to yeah. do it consistently, you know, then they can compete, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. you know, like... Absolutely. I love it. Absolutely. I love it. Yeah, man. I think it would be cool. We got to get more more documentation. And yeah. dude, I can only imagine what it was like for you growing up. If only we had like documentation of all of that. That was nuts. Real, yeah, real, yeah. real quick. I don't want to move on without actually giving uh, you know their their credit. Uh, your new teammate, uh, Ronnie Dizon. Got to give Ronnie yeah. Dizon a ton of credit for his documentaries because he does offer that that kind of like behind the scenes lifestyle you know, with, with Houston heat, which is really cool. Um, there's, there should yeah. be like, Oh no, what do you got? I he think must... Ronnie may have uploaded a video from our first practice of yeah. me driving a golf cart the other day. I hope he did. You might want to go check out Ronnie's uh, yes, YouTube. I love it. Everybody. We went on that, 
Yeah, we went to Nico's yeah. dad's uh, ranch um, out in Texas, and uh, they had like three of those, you know, heavy duty golf carts, and they just leave the keys in them. <laughs> <laughs> there goes cash money. There he goes. Yeah. We went off roading a bit. Oh, yeah. oh man, yeah. Everybody head over to cool. the Dizon Docs uh, YouTube channel. Ronnie does a great job. I wish, I wish one player, like honestly, that's how we could do it. One player from every team should just step up, and you know, I, I understand we want to, we want to be all focused, and and I've always been, you know, like when I'm at practice, I want to just kind of focus on practice, and, and when I'm at the tournaments, I want to focus on the tournaments, but. There does need to be a balance. There should be one player from every team that just, you know, puts some some cool stuff up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Start it's hard. You know, sometimes not everybody wants to have, uh, you know, in a professional locker room. You know, mm-hmm. not not everybody wants to let you in. You know, on that For that sure. time. But mm-hmm. you know, there's definitely some where it's not always too. You know, we're not too serious with ourselves, and those are always the funny times, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude. So, uh, and push when you are like tying your headband and you're like, ah, you know, just living life. That's, that's what paintball is the whole time you're traveling. You know, you get to, yeah. you get to step outside of normality. It, it's a, it's a rare thing to be able to experience. Um, and all paintball players know that feeling when you're just not, you're not doing the normal rigmarole on these days when you go play paintball and it feels really good. And it's, it's a, it's just a moment where we can actually express ourselves and like be as loud as you want to be in the, in that paintball ring or, you know, like hanging out with your paintball team. It's, it's a, it's a timeless sport and I'm sure a lot of athletes can attest to it, but it's just a really special thing. I think with paintball more so, cause you're literally going into straight up war <laughs> into battle with your boys and I might catch some blood over here on my riblets if you don't watch my back out here, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like the welts, they, they're, a, they're a real thing and, and you got to have each other's back. And paintball is just an amazing sport for, you know, the brotherhood, the sisterhood, the family, the community, everybody just coming together, having some fun. That's it, man. Yeah, I can learn. You learn so many life lessons too, playing sports. Yeah. You know, and paintball is a great one, you know, being part of a team. I love being part of teams. And I love, uh, you know, having teammates and, you know, putting it all together because you guys know when you win, you know, like I texted you, Tyler, you know, right when you guys won World Cup because I was sitting here and I was watching it from this seat, you know, and I could Mm -hmm. see that moment between you guys, you know, like what that meant to you and how hard you guys worked and, you know, everything that you would put together, you know, with the podcast and everything and, you know, Mm -hmm. for it all to come together uh, right there in that moment, like that was the reason why we do all this stuff right it's it's you know you put in that time you know that hard work as an individual but then you build stuff with other people mm-hmm. you know and then you get a tournament you win and it you was know crazy. that that, is, that means everything but we, we, were, we looked at each other like are you for real did this like <laughs> yeah. like this <laughs> this is crazy yeah. Because it, it was it was like you couldn't couldn't write something like that. Like we started the show and then we're, you know, it's, I guess it's a testament to the power of the spoken word or something like that. But we're like talking about this is the direction. You know, this is how we're going to do it. This is where the footsteps go. And then for it to come down to the two on three. And then I hear this fool over there, Tyler. <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah, bro, I got you. And then, you know, we uh, we pull that out. It was just, it was insane. It was a timeless moment for for the culture. You know, that's what it's all about for the paintball culture. Yeah. It was crazy. Absolutely. I can feel it. I can feel it from here. Dude, let's go. Great. <laughs> yeah. So Tom, and, we- uh, there's more paintball. Yeah. Yeah. Ton, tons more paintball, man. Mm-hmm. I, I, uh, you know, we have, we have an event coming up pretty soon. We got to see if we can defend that. I'm sure Todd yeah. will be on the other side, giving us hell on Sunday too. You know, uh, <laughs> hey, uh, we're going to try our darndest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Todd, let's dive back in a little bit to, uh, you know, after you got into the game, how you got into like, you know, the tournament side and, and carved your path into the professional scene. Um, mm-hmm. you kind of alluded to you and Rich, joining the Ironmen together, but let's kind of regress a little bit and, and go from there. Well, so I started playing uh, novice tournaments. They were like, hey, this is tournament paintball. And I'm like, I was all about it. You know, I was like, this is so much fun. I really want to do this. And in, uh, I believe it was 1997, um, I started playing, uh, it might've been 96. I, 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 I usually have my, my years on mm-hmm. point, but like I talked about this, I think with Maddie. And I couldn't remember if it was 96 or 97, 
But I think I started, I think my first year was 95. And then 96, I think, was the year where I was playing like uh, walk-ons. And then 97 is the first year of tournaments I think I played. Because yeah. I played novice tournaments in 2007 or in uh, 1997. And back then it was just pro and amateur, right? And then uh, in the NPPL circuit, you know, which was the main circuit back in the day, they started amateur B, um, which I played in 1998. But in 97, I started playing novice tournaments. And there was a, a series called the Great Western Series, right? The WCPPL yeah. um, that Mike Hinman created is essentially the Great Western Series of today, right? It's the California, West yeah. Coast, you know, West Coast, Arizona, Washington, West Coast Series that, you know, that everybody, that all the amateurs play over here. So there's a Great Western Series and it was amateur and novice. Um, the amateurs was cool because you could have one pro for your five-man team and two pros for your 10-man team. So we got to watch uh, pros from the Ironman or GBD um, or, you know, any of the uh, Avalanche, you know, LaSoya was out there playing. I got to watch these dudes play um, from a very young age. So, uh, you know, I started playing those novice tournaments in 97. And then, you know, I played at the same field that uh, Matt Marshall, Davey Williamson, uh, Michael McLaughlin, um, later, uh, I ended up seeing him down there. Um, and my buddy, Eli Santos, uh, they played for a team called Navarro and yeah. those were the dudes, those uh -huh. were the swag champs, you know, in my, in my young eyes, right. You had my team, which was Marine team, which was fully sponsored by war games, uh, unique, uh, RP Shear, you know, and they were Marines, wow. right. They were all just clean cut, you know, top to bottom. We had the venom wear, you know, all, all brand new, crispy, clean auto conquerors, air, air systems, you yeah. know, but then you had Maddie and Davey who were out there and they had cut masks, goggles only, you know, when JT came out with the first colored straps, right. And the, the first uh, flexes with the, with the clear folded up. Hold you know, on. You said goggles only cause they only goggles covered only. their eyes. Yeah. Just goggles. JT they were getting goggles smacked in the cheeks. Goggles only, getting shot in the mouth. I mean, you guys know how cool these dudes look out there with just goggles. And I'm, I got six hoodies on. You know, my dad started, he was playing with a baseball helmet, right? Shooting a stingray. And, you know, these dudes are out there with tiger stripes, you know, cut all the way up to their ribs so that they dangle so you can get bounces, just goggles, headbands, backward hat, forward hat. You know, um, my buddy Dave Hafter uh, played on Navarone. And uh, it was just like, they, they, they were just the, the coolest dudes with the dopest styles. And they're all just like a couple years older than me. So I met them and um, they actually went from Navarone. They came and played with Marine team uh, for a little bit and then went and played with the paraplegic turtles and Dale Price from Utah, guys. right? They got me on the paraplegic turtles. And then right when I started on the paraplegic turtles, I think my first, uh my first NPPL ever was um Pittsburgh on the mounds fields in 98 right yeah and what was that nuts we played Bob Long's Iron Man uh we played Aftershock right we just got ran over in the woods in like two minutes you know but then we played a bunch of really good amateur teams and you know had success and it was a lot of fun but then Maddie and Davey and Micah went to the Iron Man right so I still played with the Turtles and then in 98, I played amateur B, uh, 10 man with Brian Greenspan, uh, a couple other, my buddies on cat factory yeah. and we won world cup 1998. Right. So I played one year of NPPLs and won a world cup right away. And it was the coolest thing ever. You know, I'm watching aftershock playing the finals, uh, team image, um, you know, Bob Long's iron man, the iron man, you know, all my buddies, like I remember sitting, uh, I think it was 97 sitting in my kitchen on my phone, right? My, my house phone with like a 30 foot slinky cord, right? <laughs> Calling Matt Marshall and Davey in Orlando to ask them like how the day went, you know, when they were playing with Navarro, you know, that see, that's what it messed me up. Cause that might've been 96, right? Mm -hmm. I remember sitting there, you know, on the, my chair with my slinky cord be like, yo, how did the games go? Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I was cooked, you know, and then for those dudes to, you know, bring me along and, you know, Maddie can tell you the story. He probably has already told you guys this story a couple <laughs> times about how we met, you know, but for them to take me under their wing, you know, Davey used to come to my house. 
because he lives right down the street. Him and Maddie live in Claremont. I live in Tierra Santa. And they would just come down the street, pick me up. You know, we go play paintball. And, you know, it's history from there. I met Mike Hinman at a really young age. And me and Hinman used to go play, you know, three times a week, right? He'd come pick me up or I'd meet him at his house, always have paint. Me and Hinman got into a battle back in the day in like, uh, like I think it was like 96 at Borderland, you know, this field uh, down in Chula Vista. Yeah, that's where and, I started. You know, it was like a local five man tournament. Went against each other. And then we went against each other. We had like, we were on different novice kids teams, right? Damn. And then there was like a big brawl at Camp Pendleton one year, our team, Marine team versus his team. You know, <laughs> you know that's a whole nother story. That was crazy. But like, you know, yeah. a lot of these dudes I've been playing against or with for so long. But, you know, it all starts, you know, in the late 90s, mid to late 90s in the woods, you know, yeah. and get to watch those pros be out there playing 10 man. I go out to Camp Pendleton on a weekend and I get to watch uh Navarone played GBD, right? GBD was Glenn Forster, um, his brother, um, John Marquez, little John, Tyler, yeah. you know little John, because little John yes, played with uh Oakland, right? Bob mm-hmm. Long's team for a long time. Yeah. That dude, yeah, you talk about bonus balling now, it's really easy. Oh. You can play your trigger three times and bonus ball somebody, you know, 10 times, right? I remember watching little John at Camp Pendleton stand <laughs> on top of a mound and just shoot somebody 15 times right it's a lot harder like you know that that guy's like fuck you intentional <laughs> yeah sitting there, you know imagine doing it with a pump yeah. <laughs> so, you know but Dude. it all started you know in the woods back in the day you know playing yeah. uh playing <laughs> against and with you know a lot of uh dudes that have made a big impact on the sport and that's why we always talk about you know no matter what we got to be at the fields playing paintball um connecting with the community Mm because it's so important for the future because i don't know there could be a first time kid that goes out and comes to the same field that i'm at and he sees me play the way that i play and then he's like whoa i want to learn how to do that you know yeah i want to do some of that and then, yeah. and then they're hooked. So we got to take it upon ourselves to all be playing as much paintball as we can, because that's what ignites the community. You know, everybody going out there, passing the torch along and, uh, and really getting this fire burning for the sport so that we want to make sure this thing's around in 50 years. We want to have a, a strong organization that, that we can pass on to the future paintball players. And hopefully my son, if he wants to, or my son's son can make a, a decent living playing paintball someday. You know, that's the dream. Yeah. You never know who you're going to inspire. You never know who's watching. You never know who's going to be like, man, I want to be like that guy. Yeah. Right. So it's very important to to go out there and play and be yourself and, you know, tell Mm. people about it and, you know, get people out there playing, you know, take, take, take friends out, bring their friends out. You know, it's it's always a good time. Always a good time to play with people that uh, are fun to be around. Hell yeah. Hey, what was it like winning world cup? like that early in your career like that what did it do for your confidence and um what would you say it played into the role of your progression and and how the i'm sure after that you know you start making connections and things start blossoming yeah i mean again i uh i think i missed the first tournament of the next year because i had school and then um Mm. the paraplegic turtles won uh that first event without me they won vegas and that I wish I really got my ears straight here, but mm. they, they won the tournament and Dale called me and he's like, yo, yeah, we played a game and then we won. And then we played another game, you know, and we won, you know, because they didn't go, uh, they didn't go to world cup. So that's why I ended up going with cap, I believe. Uh, and yeah. then it was like, uh, you know, we won the tournament and I was like, "Whoa, you gotta be kidding me. Like, I can't wait to play even more. Right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Maybe that was the year before. God, it's been so long now. But I mean, like just just playing those tournaments and, and winning them, like you just, I mean, you know how it is. Like you just get yeah. hungry for more. Like I, I'd go home and I'd have all my stuff in my room. I'd wash all my stuff, clean my gun, put it in my room, you know, and I'd, I'd be in my room just holding my gun, watching TV, mm-hmm. you know? And then when you actually get a chance to play a tournament and then win a tournament, you know, it just makes you hungrier and hungrier and hungrier. And here I am now when we get to uh, um, 
Florida at the end of the month. I'll be turning 41. And yeah, I'm baby. so excited to play and be around paintball as I was when we won when I was 17. That's you know, a beautiful it's, thing. It does not go away. You know, you, you, yeah. you get a taste of it and you enjoy it. And it just, you know, it just makes you want it even more. Mm -hmm. And seeing all, like you said, all your friends from over the years, everybody comes together and we get to play this crazy ass game. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, there's definitely yeah. something to be said about winning early. I like that you asked that question, Tyler. I, I think yeah. it's uh, it's something we kind of have gotten in the pattern of asking a lot of guests. A lot of the pros, you know, they had success early, and I think that really plays into your psyche too. You know, when you when you have success early in something, you feel like you belong. You you get that confidence. You know, it just uh, <clears throat> makes things a little little easier, a little more natural. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you understand. You get an understanding. Uh, at a young age, what it takes to right. win, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what's funny is like, as you get older, like you think about it, right? You like, you actually mm -hmm. put into words, like put into thoughts, like what it is that it takes um, to prepare and to win. But when you're younger, you're just like, oh, I did all this stuff. And then I went to the tournament and I played hard and we won, <laughs> right? And you know, I was lucky. I had, I had a lot of good guys around me, but like, it's, you know, later, later, you know, when you've gone through, uh, you know, the losses and, you know, all the extra time that you put in and, you know, the time that you didn't put in, you realize, oh, I needed to do some more of this. If mm -hmm. I'd have done this, you know, like if I had practiced a little bit more, if I'd have worked on some more snap shooting, like if I'd have done that, like, um, you know, then, you know, maybe we could have won that tournament or I could have won that gunfight. But for me, I was really lucky because um, when I, when I, met uh maddie and davy um maddie i mean we used to collect paintballs like matt had a box in his room of paint that we'd get paint from anywhere like i remember matt telling me that he would uh you know ask a pro for a case of paint because he knew they got him for free at an event and bring it home and you know you have that one case of evil right mm. and you save it for the day you know evil marbleizer and you want to shoot that you know mm. at a special time but like you go to practice and you know you you get as many balls as you could and then we go home and I go over to Maddie's house and he had this big tree in his backyard. Right. right. <laughs> and before anybody was like, you know, like even talking about, drills, yeah. talking about drills, we just played. Right. We just played. There was no playing. And then Maddie's like, yo, check this out. Come over to my house. I go over to Maddie's <laughs> house. He's like, all right, this is what we're going to do. He's got this big tree in his backyard. Okay. And there's a gate on one side of his house and there's a gate on the other side of his house. He takes a shovel and sticks it in the ground because the back of his parents' house was facing a canyon, right? Mm -hmm. So he sticks the shovel in the ground with the shovel head up, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, probably like 30, 40 feet away and there's nothing but canyon afterwards. And he takes a lawn chair and sticks the lawn chair in front of the tree. He's like, all right, this is what you're going to do. You're going to take a snapshot out the right side of the tree, hit the shovel, take a snapshot out the left side of the tree, hit the shovel. Then you have to run through the backyard, out the gate, around the house, back down the side, in the other gate, and then come into the lawn chair, and you got to hit the shovel the left side of the lawn chair, hit it out the right side of the lawn chair, and then pop over the top of the lawn chair and hit the shovel. And you can't stop until you hit all five targets. Boom. <laughs> he, he shared that story with us on Dude. here. That's clutch, man. It's like yeah. the, the originator yeah. of doing some drills. I love it. Oh, it was so good. And I was like, man, if we do this, we could probably get better. And I was like, great. <laughs> I love this. You know, we got like a box of paintballs, got like one zap paintball, you know, a couple RP, you know, some mm -hmm. uh, cow mag, like all this random shit. But, you know, it's what we had to do to be able to shoot our guns more, you know, go get an air fill and bring it home, you know, yeah. cherish your, make sure your tank's not leaking, <laughs> right? So you had enough to, we want to go out there and shoot that paint. <laughs> he's the, he's probably like the first one, of, I would have to imagine the first to, uh, to do drills like that ever. Seriously. Yeah. I mean. Who knows what other people were doing, man. But like, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, I was so young and I had yeah. no idea that, you know, there were even drills. I, it was just a, a totally. fun game. And it was like, hey, if we do this, we get better. All right, mm -hmm. let's do it. Hell yeah. I miss the paint too. The paint back in the day, man, was just, it was like, um, I don't know, it's indescribable. The way that it broke, the way it flew, the, just the, even the shot, it changes the shot as well. Cause the paintball was a little bit heavier. It's just a different time, but I miss that paint. You know what I liked about paint back in the day is that mm. there was like actually like brands, but mm. then there was like types of balls, right? Yeah. Nowadays it's like purple with yellow fill, you know, green with orange fill, right? 
Yeah. There is cool I stuff. Remember when RP Square had, right? <laughs> yeah. RP had the, the Marbleizer. Yeah. Oh, right? Yeah. Always wanted to shoot Marbleizer, you know? Mm. Looked really cool, had the cool swirl. And then mm -hmm. they came out with the premium gold, right? Oh, premium yeah. gold mm -hmm. had, you know, one half was gold and then one half was a different color and it had that color fill. You know, Zap came out with like four different balls that were one color and then different on the inside, but they all had cool names, yeah. you know? Like, I always thought that, like, that was fun. And then, you know, you had the All-Star. I remember when I started playing with the Turtles when uh, All-Star oh, yeah. came out, right? All -Star was the Star, Star Ball. And then yeah. there's Evil Star Ball. You know, like, being able mm -hmm. to, like, look at your paint and, like, touch it. And, you know, it was the best. Balls and we're all, like, that yeah. was really cool, too. You know, obviously, it's probably just a marketing thing, you know? Yeah. But I always thought it was really cool. The Gator Black, the all-black ball with the bright green fill from RP. Mm -hmm. you know, that's, we, that's stuff so, cool like those were little things that made paintball cool cooler, yeah, you know? yeah i mean anytime you strut up to the you know they had the briefcase you know paintballs you just look like yeah. you're ready for business when you got one of those <laughs> briefcase hellfire yeah just just mowing yeah. people down with that orange juice you you originated the orange juice remember in all these videos uh, uh, oh my uh, god will, will, arroyo. will arroyo started saying it Oh I yeah! Think everybody was just like orange juice, orange juice. <laughs> Dude, it became like a cultural thing where everybody was talking about, you know, when they would be shooting people with Hellfire, they're getting that orange juice. And I yeah. actually, I want to dig into that too because you've done some amazing things just for you know paintball videos and stuff like uh, um, the short bus. Obviously, oh, was, the short was bus. outstanding. Um, <laughs> I forgot about the short bus. <laughs> so tap in with me for a second on the short bus, and then we'll get back into your lineage. Um, but I just want to talk about that for a second, how that came to be. So that was something that was all uh, Rob Askamendi's idea. Everybody knows Rob is Dirt or Rob. Yeah. Um, you know, he comes to me one day, you know, I think he had done like one or two already. Um, and was like, he came, he, like, he, cause he was there filming. He played paintball. He's actually from San Diego. Um, uh, he used to play down at Borderland uh, back in the day, just like we did. And, uh, you know, he started filming paintball. You know, he was a guy that was passionate about film and making videos. And he wanted to make paintball videos and found that he ended up with a ton of blooper reels. <laughs> right. And he did. I think he did like one or two. And then he's like, hey, do you want to do this? And I'm like, yeah, I'd love to do that. That'd be great <laughs> you know, to watch these videos and, you know laugh our balls off and make fun of people. And yeah. man, I had so much fun with that. You know, we did the first couple and, you know, I was like kind of nervous at first, you know, the first couple just, you know, just, we'd just watch the clips and just talk and he'd just film us while we were talking, you know, yeah. and like just go off the top of our heads. And, you know, mm -hmm. I ended up having a couple different guys with me, you know, Nikki Cuba did it with me. Um, uh, yeah, Catfish did it with me. Uh, yeah. uh, Tommy O'Donnell got on there, you know, one time with me, like, yeah. We had so much fun doing it. He'd like run through the clips and we would just go off the top of our heads, you know, make up funny mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. And then like, while you're saying that stuff, you know, the clips are going. So, you know, you'd also think of like other stuff that was hilarious. So <laughs> then we'd run through it a second time, right? Run through the second time and say the other thing that you thought was hilarious about it, you know, or <laughs> you know, try and build off, of, you know, whatever you said before. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was all just basically off the top of the dome, right? Yeah. And you know, after a couple times of doing it, like being kind of nervous and just, you know, talking trash, like I enjoyed doing it because it was so much fun, you know, and I got to, you know, just do it with my buddies and, you know, yeah. there were so many funny clips, but then I was like, super got into it. I, I go to the dollar store before I'd go to Rob's house and just whatever I could buy. Right. I would just buy random shit at the dollar store and like have a bag of stuff. Right. <laughs> and then just like, that's why you see me like holding just the most random shit in these uh you know in these videos because it's just stuff i bought at the dollar store on the way to rob's house to shoot these videos you know you're yeah. like all right i got another rack of clips new video yeah. coming out like, let's do it you know so we do all the bloopers and you know he'd bring stuff in and then he came up with the idea for uh bunker insurance right mm -hmm. yeah and he had the bunker insurance uh video which was just you know the all full short bus video and that was so yeah. much fun doing that stuff you know, the, the whole intro was based off of a, a spoof that Kobe did um, for uh, ankle insurance, right? <laughs> but it was all Rob's ideas. You know, Rob came up with this stuff. Like all the funny videos I used to make for, 
um, Raza paintball back in the day. Like, oh yeah, I would, like I'd tell Rob like a stupid idea, and then he would just run with it, you know, or he'd mm-hmm. tell me, you know, something stupid, and I would just run with that, you know. But you know, the creativity and actually putting everything together, you know, that was all dirt to Rob. I was just sitting yeah. in a chair talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> You're the talent. You know? You're the talent. Blast. Yeah. Show up. I, make you know, up I wish Rob was still around, you know, but he's, uh, you know, doing big things and I'm really mm-hmm. happy for him. But, yeah. you know, guys like him that were passionate about paintball that, you know, knew us, you know, as people, you know, and cared about us and what we did and how much we loved the game. You know, he loved the game as well. You know, and he brought his personality out in his videos, you know, Mm -hmm. his contribution to paintball was those old videos. So, Mm -hmm. you know, if anybody hasn't seen those, go back and watch, you know, the Dirter collection of paintball videos. And it's a great collection about a lot of really good players back in the day. And, you know, you can see if you start from the beginning, how he refined his craft the same way we continue to work on our craft every year to be the best that we can be. And, you know, he has now transcended paintball and is, doing other stuff and i wish him all the success in the world absolutely man yeah and and your your email like when you sent it to me it has like part of a record deal so you have no problem going off the top of the dome we know you're talented (laughs) and can just spit that hot fire um but the people want to know uh actually one of our one of our members usg revamped he wants to know if there will ever be another short bus are we going to have something maybe down the line we can make a you know connection back with rob and get some funny stuff going so i mean we just need the clips you know i think uh yeah. you know i don't know who would have all the clips so you know it probably would be uh ghost sports right now in the pros but yeah i mean the majority of the clips come from the divisional field you yeah know I mean? <laughs> so, yeah we gotta hit in you know there's you guys know you probably follow a lot of uh you know instagram accounts for the the media yeah. members that Mm-hmm. you know do all the divisional stuff i'm sure if we got a compilation of clips yeah. from all the divisional uh media guys then you know Dude. i'd be perfectly willing to sit in front of a camera and uh give my yeah. feedback you know? yeah, yeah yeah all right so you heard that someone pay this man pay cash money let's get short I'll do it for going free. Get... we just need the clips we need <laughs> yeah. the clips get the, clip. and we need the editor we need yeah. the editor put it together Dude, I was actually on short bus uh, doing the double gun run. Uh, you guys, I yeah. think you were even, were you on Dynasty when I did the the double gun run? Because Dynasty was the sure. one. Yeah, y'all yeah. y'all made me do it kind of. Alex Frazier was on the sidelines and I was talking to him. He's like, go out there with two guns. I was like, all right, I'll do it. And then I went, <laughs> I went out there with two guns and the ref was yelling at me. And then I picked it up at the last second. But I made it on the, uh, the old short bus there. It was great. Was that the all-star game? <laughs> Yeah, dude, yeah. it was in the All Star. That was the All Star game, wasn't it? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Chicago, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. having yeah. some fun. I think I even was, was. I I mean, this is so bad. I was running around with a squirt gun. I didn't even have a paintball gun. I literally <laughs> ran around out on the field with a squirt gun for a minute there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. I yeah. like that. Having fun, man. That's what it's all super about. Super soaker? Was it a super, super soaker? It was a thought? super soaker, baby. <laughs> We need to bring the all-star game back. I know. I've been saying that forever, dude. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. It wouldn't be that hard. Let's no, do it. it wouldn't be that hard. It's all just about the timing though, right? Yeah. How do we do it? Like, I, you know, I remember uh, mm-hmm. talking to Maddie and Rab about this before one season uh, down the street over here. Rab was in town. And I was just like, bro, you know, like, why don't we have the all-star game? Like, does it need to be a standalone thing? You know, because at the end of the day, it always comes down to the money, right? Right. Who's going to pay to fly guys in if we do it somewhere else? Do we have the extra time? You know, when guys are going to play a tournament, does it take away from their focus of doing it before? Who's going to pay for them to stay after? You know, like, blah, 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 blah. It needs to happen, right? Because Mm -hmm. when you get a game that is the best of the best, right? however you want to split it up, East coast, West coast, you know, you know, even though there's no divisions, you know, we could very easily decide these teams are East coast, these teams mm-hmm. are West coast mm-hmm. or do it like the NBA, NBA is doing it now have mm-hmm. a draft, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe we have the people vote on the two captains, right. Mm-hmm. Or have the coaches of the league vote on who are the two captains and then let the captains draft their players. Yeah, because- you know, I was, my first practice uh, with heat, we're sitting in Nico's barn out there at uh uh, the ranch and uh, I'm like Sam let's fantasy draft right now you know and we went back and forth he pick a guy I pick a guy he pick a guy I pick a guy 
You know, he's like, we do this for hours. He's like, I used to do that with Tim forever. You know, we just do it, you know, back and forth, back and forth, you know, fantasy, and fantasy draft, so different pro players in the paintball league. Yeah. So yeah. like, it'd be like right now, it's me and you, yeah. Marcelo. Yeah, yeah, you got, yeah. I'll give you the first pick who you got. I'm taking Tyler. He's sitting right here. You're taking Tyler? Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, man. Okay. All right. Spoil your See, plan. You know, I got Chad George. I got Chad George, right? And yeah. then you go and I go, you go, I go, dude. There could be – it could be so fun, you know. Yeah. yeah. yeah whoever, yeah, yeah. you know, we pick the right guys to, to draft the teams. Man, an all-star game would be fantastic. We mm. absolutely need that. And if we took it seriously, I know that there's a couple of star all-star games that were – you know, kind of, kind of kooky, you know, everybody yeah. was out there having fun, <laughs> but Tyler, you remember the seven man, Marcel, you remember the seven man all-star oh, yeah. game. Yeah. I feel uh-huh. like we took those seriously. Yeah. Very. Right. Yeah. Like we took those seriously and it was competitive. It was mm-hmm. fun. Mm-hmm. It was right. Yeah. So yeah. I, I feel like we need that, you know, mm-hmm. because every, every league has an all-star game. And yeah, you know, I remember, I mean, remember when you were a kid and you made all-stars in, Dude. uh, in, in baseball or you made all-stars in basketball, you know, yeah. that was the best. There's, yeah. You know? I never played Being those sports there. when I was a kid. Yeah. I was, I, I no? was paintball since I was nine years old, man. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but, but you know, know what I'm saying, though. Yeah, absolutely. Right? It's just all-star. What? Yeah. That's it. I agree. That's what it's all about. I agree. I, gotta, I think we can squeeze. We I think we could squeeze it in one of the days on, on the lunch break or do something. Um, Maybe at World Cup, since we have the extra day, you can do an all-star game there. But I, you know, I understand people not wanting to play a whole extra match at the World Cup. That's the, you know, that's yeah. the biggest event of the year. Um, but I, I look where there's a will, there's a way. Mm-hmm. Let's just figure it out. Um, I mean, yeah. to be yeah. honest, if we could have some kind of compromise where as long as, you know, paint and hotels covered, I would probably get my own flight if I got chose to chosen to be on one of the all-star teams, you know. I yeah. feel like it makes sense for sponsors to pitch in to send their players if they're chosen. Um, I'm yeah. sure there's a way that it can be done. Mm. Yeah. You know, and that could be a cool standalone event that could even be a pay- pay-per-view kind of thing, you know? Yeah. At the end of the, at the end of the year, you know, pay-per-view only. And uh, you know, just if we make enough money to, to get everybody out there, you know, cause it is paintball is not cheap, right. Between all the, the paint and all the expenses of traveling and getting out there, everybody that plays tournament paintball knows, then it costs money. Right. Yes. But, you know, and maybe some guys can't make it and other guys, you know, fill in and, but to be able yeah. to have a best of the best game once a year, you know, if we were to do a standalone event, we play three matches. Yeah. I think it'd be exciting. I'd watch. It, oh, are you kidding me? It'd be insane. That'd be the best. I mean, th- that's what everybody wants to see. Um, they want to see the best players pe- play against the best players. That's why everybody tunes into the show and, I even think that, you know, I know they did it early on in my career, our careers, uh, the three man pro, they had, you know, these three man top three players playing the top three players that that was interesting. It almost got to TV. I think that stuff they did out in Vegas when I was super young. Yeah. 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 Ultimate madness, ultimate something like that. But Marcelo, you, you know, this firsthand golden state Kings, right? Right. You got to play with Archie. Mm-hmm. You got to play with Spica. I mean, obviously you've played with these guys before, right? Pretty but much like, the rest of the team was Dynasty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Ryan, Blake. Yeah. But, yeah. but you know, like, when you get to play mm-hmm. with dudes that you don't normally play with is my point. For sure. Right? Like, if you got team to play USA. on a team with, with uh, you know, you, Malloy. You've already played with Malloy already. Uh, <laughs> you, Chad George. <laughs> Well, like, just like Team Tyler. USA, the, the Team USA time Team is USA. like, that's, that's like yeah. the, the one of the coolest experiences we get because exactly. we're so often straight competitors competing against each other. These are players that yeah. I respect, you know, often a lot of them I've looked up to, you know, when I was younger and now you get to play with them in this all-star game or Team USA. And it is, it's a really cool, unique thing that we get to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that just goes back to what I was saying at the very beginning of the show, like, being able to play with those guys or coach those guys that I haven't done that before with, you get to know them on a deeper personal level and Mm -hmm. you have such a bigger appreciation for them as people and for their game. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you get to play with that, like you watch the NBA all-star game when LeBron's playing with Steph Curry and Damian Lillard, you know, and guys Mm -hmm. he's never played with before, Mm -hmm. like 
do you see how much fun they were having? Yeah. You know, it was it was absolutely insane. You know, to Stephen be able to go went off. off. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, you make the All Star team just like playing with Team USA. You know, you 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 have that once a year experience, and you think about it all year. And if yeah. you're good enough, and you dedicate yourself enough, and you make the All Star team, well, that's an achievement in and of itself. Yeah, because the people. You know, you, the only way to get into the all-star is by getting voted in, you know? So you also have to be a part of the community and be doing some really good things, not just as a great player, but as a, as a great community member of this sport. So like when I was younger, I made the all-star game a few times and it meant the world to me because I felt like I was, I was, you know, doing something in the sport and, and paving the way for the future kids and for, you know, other players to come through and be able to say, okay, this little little gromulin from the Central Valley can do it. I can get out there and do this too, you know? And then yeah. uh, people just go out and start having fun and, and we get more participants that way too. So we yeah. definitely need something like that. Something to shoot for. Something to shoot yeah. for too, you know? Mm -hmm. It's something to, you know, more motivation, you know? Yeah. Be able to make the all-star team and have that experience and mm -hmm. save that jersey for the rest of your life. That's it. That's it, man. Yeah. Um, so when did like you you won the world cup in early in your career and then when did things really start picking up and like carrying steam and you started getting that real pro ball level style going okay so it was uh chicago of 99 i believe because mm -hmm. i think in the beginning of 99 is when yeah so maddie and davy I think they went to the Ironman in the beginning of 99. Mm. And I was playing with the paraplegic turtles um, in Chicago and on the airball field. I'll never forget because Dave Thomas, Opie Thomas, yeah. uh, image, the airball field was so big. He would just walk along the back line with an auto cocker and an 18 inch barrel. And he didn't <laughs> even go to a bunker. He would just sit back there and he would just shoot. Right. Didn't go to a bunker for like the first I don't know, 30 seconds, minute, sometimes seemed like a minute and a half. So he was back there forever. Right. And I'm just watching this dude, you know, and Opie, even though he's, you know, short and round, you know, he still was fast. You know, he was dynamic. Everybody on image was blazing fast. That's one team that I love watching because everybody was super athletic, dynamic, mm -hmm. fast, right? Opie would like stand there and he'd shoot and pick a spot and then boom, he'd just take off running. Right. Yeah. Well, Avalanche was refing uh, that event. Um, I was playing with the turtles and, you know, I was watching, you know, watching play. I was watching all these pros play. And I felt like that tournament really got me like pumped to watch the pros because airball, there's now airball at every tournament, right. When they yeah. all had the tubes that were all connected to each other. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, I was really fast and Dale was like, Hey, you're going to go to that uh, 50 on the break. Right. And I was like, all right. You know, didn't see a whole lot of people running to that spot. And I mean, you could, you could barely even shoot it. You, know, like you had to run to your spot to be able to shoot it. So I, I was taking that 50 Dorito every single game. Right. And you know, I think that's where I actually got noticed by the pro players. Right. Because it was where the, uh, the field with the uh, long zigzag, where they ended up putting the, the big baseball diamond. Right. Yeah, yeah. And they had the zigzag snake. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it was basically the main field um, where they had the air ball field uh for that tournament and everybody would watch you know there was no bleachers it was just standing room only you stand on the nets and i would just run to that thing and i was making it every time shooting a bunch of people and i think that's where i got noticed because um the next tournament um the iron man brought me up and my oh, first wow. tournament playing pro was boston of 99 amazing so, you know, did you did you find a route or some way that you read the field that other yep. players weren't directly to it <laughs> there straight go. there yeah. Yeah. yeah nice yeah dude for people who don't know tizzle had some wheels back in the day oh yeah some yeah. Wheels. yeah cash money 100 yeah. i started playing sports when i was two years old basically my brother played soccer i played soccer just followed him around i played soccer all the way up to high school uh basketball ever since i was a little kid played baseball all the way through high school like I, I played sports. All I did was play sports. I love sports. Mm -hmm. And my parents were like, as long as you get good grades, you know, you can do whatever you want. So, you know, my brother was really, really smart and school came easy to him, but he didn't like sports. Uh, but I wanted to play sports so bad. 
you know, I just, I'd work my butt off to get good grades in school and, you know, I got good grades and they let me do whatever I want. So yeah, dude, that's crazy. You know, I was very fortunate to have supportive parents, you know, parents out there with your kids, you know, nothing means more than making sure your kids are happy and, you know, motivated, you know, just support them and whatever they do. Cause I know that mm-hmm. anything I asked my dad, you know, that we could go do, he was, he was all about it. You know, he trusted yeah. me, you know, he taught me to be safe and he encouraged me to, you know, be myself and, you know, enjoy what I did and have fun. So, you know, I definitely credit him for giving me the opportunities to play paintball as, you know, when we were getting to going and then also trust me enough and trust Maddie and Davey and, uh, you know, my buddy Dave Hafter and my buddy Kenny Chamberlain and a couple other guys that were instrumental when I was younger to, you know, take me out and, you know, let me fly, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, if it wasn't for those guys and, you know, it wasn't for my dad bringing me up and trusting me, then, you know, I wouldn't have had those opportunities. So, yeah, you know, it meant the world to me and I got to do what I love and now I'm still doing it. That's, that's amazing, man. And where, where did you get your like fire from your passion, Maple. like the, the energy? Yeah. 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 So I, I'm, you know, growing up, like I was really shy, you know, mm-hmm. I was super shy. I love sports, you know, and I was competitive, but I was definitely a very shy person, you know, and when I started hanging out with Maddie and Davey, you know, without like my parents around and, you know, they were different, they were different personalities, they were a little bit older too, but they were cool as shit, you know what I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> not only were they, they were like, they still are, bros, you know what I mean, like, yeah. they introduced me to Wu-Tang, they introduced me to Tupac, <laughs> you know, like all the good shit, right? I used to listen to like Billy Joel and Vanessa Williams, right? Like, (laughs) like whack shit, right? And then they, they schooled me to the game, you know, like, check this out, you know, here's your first Wu-Tang CD, you know? Me and Dave, maybe had a lowered uh, Integra, right? A lowered Acura, you know, diamond white, you know, with loud pipes. We'd be rolling through Claremont with Wu-Tang blasting, you know, and I was like, this is the shit, you know what I mean? (laughs) Took that back took that back, uh, you know, to school. And, you know, when I, um, you know, really couldn't go any farther in uh, the other sports, um, you know, I really, I mean, I I played basketball all the way through high school. I really loved basketball so much. Like it was my favorite Mm -hmm. sport. They wouldn't let me play soccer and basketball at the same time. So I chose basketball. Um, I gave up on baseball because I just loved paintball so much. Like it was basically, so I I probably, I guess that first year must've been when I was 14, because I think I was a a freshman in high school because a kid that I had met at the paintball field ended up going to my high school. I went to St. Augustine high school uh, in San Diego and a kid that was a freshman played rec paintball with me. Um, it's nice when you go to high school and your uh, best friend is a six foot eight, 14 year old, right? <laughs> we had played paintball together. And uh, you know, I just got into it and I was still playing the other sports, but you know, paintball was just so addicting. You know, it was so much fun you know, when I was 14, 15, you know, I, I remember missing uh, practice in other sports to go play paintball tournaments. You know, I drove to Vegas, uh, you know, with the junior Marine team. And, you know, just, I was just like, man, like, this is it. You know, I'm watching high level amateurs, certain pros were there. And, you know, I'm, I'm 14, 15 years old, you know, going into my junior year, 16. And it's just like, man, you know, like, this is it, like, this is paintball. And then when I realized that I could be good at paintball and I could play more and like raise my level and, you know, cause a, a five foot eight white guy, you know, you don't see many of those guys in the NBA, right? Mm-hmm. Like you just don't. You know, <laughs> <laughs> kind of right? rough, kind of tough. <laughs> you know? And, uh, you know, I wasn't, you know, I, I was probably, you know, a buck 50, you know, as, as a freshman, you know, so I wouldn't, football wasn't for me, you know, and, <laughs> Yeah, I just realized that, you know, I could be competitive at paintball. And then, you know, when you get good and, you know, you start having success, I just became more comfortable with myself because, you know, I was hanging out with dudes that were cool. You know, they thought I was cool. And, you know, I just, I felt more comfortable and they let me be myself. And, you know, I thank those guys to this very day for what they did for me because it allowed me to open up, you know, because Mm -hmm. being so shy when I was young and, you know, they really helped, uh, you know, bring me out of my shell. And, 
you know, you can ask Maddie and Davey, you know, what a young sheltered nerd I was back in the day. You, know, <laughs> you would have never, it, never thought. Dude, getting into paintball brought it all out of me. And I'm yeah. thankful for paintball for those guys. And then going down the line, every person, every teammate that I've ever played with, you know, all those personalities, just being able to travel the world and meet different people and see what people are like, yeah. right? You know, like being able to know, you know, what the, what the New Yorkers are like, you know, what the Florida guys are like, you know, even mm -hmm. what the NorCal guys are like compared to the SoCal guys, you know, like yeah. it's crazy. And, you know, being able to see those people, you know, really changed my life. And, you know, I, I'm more thankful to paint ball than anything for that mm -hmm. opportunity. Mm -hmm. And, and by God, did it bring you out of your shell because you became one of the most stylistic dudes and the most like outspoken, big energy characters paintball has ever seen. And I kind of want to tap on like your style too. Like, where did you get hardwired with all that flavor, man? Where did you, where did you pick Wu -Tang, all that baby. <laughs> no doubt, yeah. man. Hip hop, hip -hop yeah. was definitely a big part of it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I feel like I was very fortunate, you know, to be, the age that I am, you know, the late nineties hip hop was definitely a big thing. Um, but also, um, sports, you know, my favorite athletes were like Deion Sanders, you know, prime mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. right. You want, you turn on the TV and you see how Deion Sanders playing baseball, you know, playing football. He's got his gloves, you're right. With that are not strapped, <laughs> right. He's got the, the headbands and, you know, uh, I was a big Barry Bonds fan back in the day, you know, little yeah. Barry, not big Barry, you know, yeah. little Barry. <laughs> Right. You know, the pirates, the, the giants, you know, all those, the baseball dudes with their chains, uh, yeah. you know, gold chains, gold crosses. Right. Yeah. You know, then like all the bright colors, you know, I thought that, um, that was one thing that was cool about paintball is, you know, we're, you know we started off with camo, but then when JT had the, that first set of straps that came from racing, it was like, mm. man, that looks really cool when you got all camo, but then you got a bright orange strap. Mm -hmm. Right. So, a lot of my style came from, you know, Maddie and Davey and those Navarone guys because they were, you know, the younger dudes. And then you start playing and you read the magazines and, uh, you know, you see all these other dudes with their style, like the pro teams. Like a lot of guys wore JT back in the day, right? There was camo, right? And even when everybody was wearing camo, guys looked different. Like the East Coast guys used to wear big, like, T-shirts over their head, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, the West Coast guys all wore baseball hats forward. Right. And then there was the headbands, right? Everybody's pays a million dollars for a Sandana headband back in the day. We used to have bags and bags of those things and nobody <laughs> wore them, right? It was head wraps, right? If only and you knew. Reminds, yeah, right. That reminds <laughs> me of one thing, Marcelo. Uh, the last podcast I was listening to, I remember um, the, the head wrap that I gave you, yep. right? Yeah. You busted it out, right? Because you knew it had mojo and mm -hmm. you wore it. You know, when when you felt the mojo, when you needed it, right? Mm -hmm. It's funny that you brought that up because when I went to Aftershock, it was the same thing for me, right? I got an Aftershock and Billy Saransky hands me the real tree, tree trunk uh, head wrap, right? And it was basically like a passing of the torch, you know? I mean, he still played for a long time after that, but it was just like, uh, maybe not passing the torch, maybe like initiation. Right. Mm -hmm. It was like an initiation. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. here you go. Like, you're part of our crew. You've earned this. We wear these. Right. Bruno, uh, Ryan Williams, uh, Saransky, you know, like those OG Aftershock guys, they all wore those and they gave me one. And I was like, man, you know, and I wore my cash money do rag due to mm -hmm. the strange guys. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike Nicholson showed up to one tournament and he had five do rags, five cash money do rags. And he's like, yo, I got these at the gas station on the way here, right? <laughs> Me, Oliver, John Richardson, Dirty Dave, Pastori, uh, Mike Ivan Sevic, Fast Mike, and uh, uh, you know, a couple of the other strange dudes, right? Uh, and you know, and Mike Nicholson, right? We all wore those. I just ended up the guy in the picture wearing it. That you know, and that's how I ended up with the nickname because it was a Diablo ad with yeah. me in it. They put that on there. But Billy Saransky <laughs> gave me that that uh, head wrap, and I wore it over my do rag. Mm. So um, we won that tournament, and I took that head wrap, and I was like, "Man, I'm gonna put this away." You know, I, I clean it, and I put it away, and I only took it out 
when I really felt like I needed to win a tournament. And I pulled it out five times and I won all five of those tournaments. Mm. The, this was a Sandana or the, or the cash? Sandana. Now the one that he talk. gave me was the Sandana. With do you the still Sandana have it? Real yeah. Hold on one sec. Hey, hold on one sec. Todd. <laughs> all right. For the YouTube, Marcelo's headed off to go get something. I think he's got, <laughs> he's got a relic in the, in the house here somewhere. Dude, that's crazy. Uh, yeah. It's funny that you I had a. Right away. I'm glad he's got his handy. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mojo. Well, you probably got how many totes full of of gear would you say that you have? Twenty. Twenty. And I'm still packing. Oh my god. Still packing. Dude, that's crazy. Yeah. Twenty totes. <laughs> yeah, twenty of those Costco twenty-seven gallon totes. Full. So that's why I have all these Bro. pictures. I've been repacking it. All right, yeah. what do you got? He's back. Do you remember this, Todd? He's back. He's got a yeah. sandana. That's you you always wore. You gave this to me. Do you not remember this? Yeah, <laughs> I, that's what I'm saying. Like I remember you. you the last Dude. of your podcast that I listened to, you brought it up, and that reminded me. And I was like, Yeah, because yeah. Billy Billy Sransky did that for me. Yeah, uh. dude, you gave this to me when. Honestly, like my, my, my memory with dates are really bad, but it was, um, it was well before I went pro, I was a kid. And again, I've known you since I was like 10 years old. Remember, yeah. like, I remember my dad, uh, and I came over to your parents' house to buy an autococker or something when I was just a, like a kid, <laughs> you know, you, you, you always looked out, but slanging, somewhere, slanging somewhere, the <laughs> somewhere along the line, you gave this head wrap to me. And this sandana is my, is my lucky sandana. It's like, every time I pull it out, we win these big events, you know, and it's, it yep. now has this, this massive hole, unfortunately. So I've kind of retired mm -hmm. it, but now that I'm looking at it, I, I could sew that up pretty easily. I think I need to bring this back on the scene. Yeah. This oh, no, man. I, yeah, you, yeah. you keep it, you keep it, you know, and yeah. you, you pull it out when it feels right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, 100%. If you're like, man, I really need this one. I really want to win this one. You know, that's when you pull it out. Yeah. Yeah, I, right? agree. I, I, I remember agree. that one because you know, with with the little hole in it, you know. But mm -hmm. you definitely, uh, you definitely got some wins in that that guy right there. Yeah, dude, it, it's it, it's crazy. It's it it truly has been like I'll randomly pull it out, and the last time I did pull it out was 2015 World Cup, you know, and and we won mm -hmm. that one. It was like hey, there's something, there's a lot of mojo in that in that sandana yeah. right there. Yeah. yeah, it's got the energy. Yeah. Dude, I'm telling you, I, I still have, I still have so many things that like I wore it one time and it was like, all right, I can't wear this again. You know, I got this pair yeah. of gloves and like, I can't wear these again. Yeah. You know, I wore these and we won. I'm going to stick these over here, you know? Yeah. He, but, Marsh, while you were, while you were away, he said he has 20 Costco sized tubs full of gear from, jerseys, from all the years jerseys, of just, pants, yeah. Yeah. Mostly jerseys, but I have like pants gear sacks a full goggle thing like yeah i got trophies pictures like all sorts of mm. stuff i got a really cool dude, collection i'd like awesome. to make a video of it maybe you guys can do it for me dude yeah absolutely it, man Sign i'm not us that far up. away we we got to document that that's amazing paintball history right there mm -hmm. that's yeah. crazy damn man all right so when we left off with your lineage um you were you had just gone like pro this is what after chicago and you're going big time and uh, yep. Cash Money Millionaire is stepping into the pro circuit. Yeah. So I went pro in Boston, 99. Um, and then I played uh, World Cup with the Ironmen. I think we took fourth. I think we took third in, uh, in Boston. Um, and Boston is so memorable because that is the event where Mike Bruno put on the All-Americans, uh, the All-Americans camo. And allegedly <laughs> went into the swamp out of bounds. And yep. came up behind all the All Americans, and uh, or maybe he just made a great move, you know, and ran yeah. past them and they didn't see it. <laughs> yeah. and shot them all in the back, you know. I'm assuming everybody's heard this story, but this story is so old. Okay, you know? you, yeah, no, you got to tell but, this. You know, um, the aftershock and All Americans hated each other, right? Yeah. And uh, Mike Bruno started the game, and he was wearing the same exact camo that. Uh, the all Americans wear it was like renegade real tree, you know, top mm -hmm. to bottom. And within the way Adam Gardner, I don't think Billy Gardner tell it, it was like 15 seconds, but there's no <laughs> way he could have got through that swamp. There was this thick 
Woods Field next to the air ball field. And then the hyper ball field was over here. And the out of bounds line was right next to like a river. It was like a marsh. You know, it was like disgusting. Yeah. You know, like, you know, just along the tape line, you wouldn't go in it. Well, they say that Mike Bruno went into the river, you know, <laughs> went out of bounds into the river and came up in their flag station and they had no idea. And he just shot everybody in the back and the game was over in less than two minutes. And then after the game, everybody's like, there's no way that he did that. You know, he's all wet. Why is he all wet? And he took off. He took off the All-Americans camo, threw it on the ground, and set it on fire. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's no legendary. <laughs> yeah, that's the event. That's the event that that happened. Legend. Legitimately yeah. set the clothes on fire. Set it on fire. <laughs> what? Oh yeah, my God. it was nuts. Goes down, was dunks on him. Also, that event, I it was my first term with the Ironman, right? And everybody had the same black JT jerseys. And uh, I was watching Ground Zero play. And uh, Nikki Cuba's out there with bleach blonde hair, right? It's shot in the head with pink paint, right? You know those wingnut bunkers? He's like in a wingnut bunker, rubbing his head on it like this. I'm like, what's this guy doing, right? From the sideline. And then the uh, next thing I know, all these New Yorkers are coming over because G uh, GZ rolled like 40 deep, right? Oh, yeah. And they're like, hey, who are you? What are you doing? You know, they like all wanted to fight me and shit, you know? <laughs> And later, uh, I think like Mooner or Rosie comes up and they're like, hey, sorry, uh, we thought you were one of those far side guys, right? Because we had the same DT <laughs> jerseys as far side. They're like, you're on the Iron Man, you're cool. And I'm like, I wouldn't even try that. I, just, uh, I don't know. And Nikki's just like, <laughs> <laughs> rubbing his head in the yeah. bunker. <laughs> they're like, we're going to beat your ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, oh, all right. Sorry. Yeah. But dude, I, that was dude, funny. Like, the I thought you were on far side. And I was like, whoa, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, rivalry back in the day, you know? Yeah, lots of rivalries. It's funny. You were but, like uh, the the uh, Philly Americans and uh, Aftershock hated each other. I was going to say, I, I think Aftershock and everyone hated each other. <laughs> yeah, Aftershock hated everybody, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I loved about them, though. Yeah. You know, they were passionate about hating people. It was great. <laughs> yeah. um, that's also the tournament where um, I saw Richie Malcheski play for the first time. And uh, he was on Team Image. And I watched this dude, seriously, like on a woods ball field, run down a hill, flat, and then back up a hill, and shoot like three dudes on the run with an autococker. Whoa. And that's when I was like, oh, man, running and shooting, right? Running like, and shooting. I was like, you can run and shoot at the same <laughs> time, right? And I was like, this dude's ridiculous. And then we ended up playing them in the finals, and it was – on the hyperball field and whoever um, wins this game wins the tournament. Right. And I was running to this far ass sub, you know, on one side, it was the sub and the other side, there was this, I think it was like kind of a little weak diamond, you know, it wasn't mm -hmm. like the Chicago diamond, but um, I got shot on the break, I think. And I, I'm pretty sure I had like Billy wing behind me. Right. So I'm standing there on the sidelines. I got shot on the break and I see Richie Malcheski come up over the top of the center pipes. And it was just like the same two like angled pipes in Chicago. And he comes out of his pipe. Shane Pestana is inside of our hyperball pipe. Shoots Shane. Uh, bunkers Maddie. Uh, I think he might have bunkered somebody. He might have had two in there, right? But he, he bunkers one, bunkers the next one. Shoots Benini on the run across the field. Switches hands. Shoots Billy Wing on the run. Switches hands again. Shoots another guy. I think it might have been Rich <laughs> or Brohim. Like, he literally ran through and shot seven dudes in one move. And it was like, whoa. That's groundbreaking. And, I was, and everybody was like, that was the invention of the run through right there. Wow. Okay. Benini right? awesome. walked up and uh, Paul Heads, that used to play for Image, you know, I'll never forget this too. This is a random shit that I remember. Yeah, like, I love it. Tight. Benini swore, Benini swore that, that he cheated. You know, Paul said something to him and Benini goes to go kick Paul, right? And Paul would like <laughs> turn around and move right at the same time. And somebody like grabbed Benini and Benini like kicked Paul in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> And he turns around, he's like, what the? Man, fuck you, bro! And he's like, you cheater, oh, uh, But That was so funny. And I was still just like, that fool ran through and shot seven of us like nothing. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking across the field. Like, you know, from the middle of the field to the sideline, and there was easily the width of a X ball field today, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. it was far away with an auto cop. <laughs> you know, and he was just like, zinc, 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 you know? Damn. Would you say, 
would you because a lot of he never got a lot of notoriety over time like i'll bet you the pros knew how good he was but would you say he was a pretty underrated player for how good he was um i wouldn't say underrated underhyped right i see like i think my three favorite players you know that just get no props whatsoever for being amazingly ridiculous players mm-hmm. at paintball, you know, top 10 guys of all time, in my opinion, mm-hmm. are Angel Fregosa, John Richardson, and Richie Malachewski. Like yeah. those dudes were just right. insane, killed people wholesale, and just, you know, weren't getting all the props that other guys were getting, you know, yeah. and they didn't need it. They didn't ask for it. But I felt like Richie, you know, like when he pushed his glasses back up on his face, you know, <laughs> like, you knew you were in trouble then. You know, and he was just like, you know, it's timing. Like we always talk about timing, right? Like I'm that's how I knew Yosh was good, like from back in the day, because Yosh was surrounded by fast dudes, but Yosh would just go through the middle like this. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you know I mean? for, for all the listeners, you got it. You guys, if you're listening to this one, you gotta go check out Todd on the YouTube because yeah. the way he demonstrates what he's talking about is it's hilarious. That's part dude. of everything. <laughs> Dude, Richie had timing, you know, mm-hmm. he had ridiculous timing, him and JR and Angel, you know, they, oh, they yeah. just to go. You know? I can vouch, I vouch for, yeah, JR and Angel as well, man. Um, can't even tell you how many times I've seen JR just dismantle a team, just like up the middle, methodical, dismantle, just your whole team is just walking off the field. And yeah. uh, and Angel, and Angel as well, man. The uh, the the ghetto superstar, right? That's what they call it. Yeah, Vallejo's finest. There we go from the V, from the crest. That's Vallejo's <laughs> finest right there. Yeah, um, both of those guys just you know outstanding and great people too. You know, off the field as well, best dudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah no doubt. So there's a lot there at that first uh, tournament, in Boston. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. Damn. yeah, hell yeah, that's uh, crazy. That's and then, like, like, up. Every event though has these stories, you know, every event, especially the old school events, man, they were just kind of timeless, you know, now everyone takes it a little more serious. You don't really hang out and do all the, as much fun stuff, you know, Mm. paintball 15, 20 years ago is really something special. Yeah. Well, the reason why I feel like is because there was so much less, right? You played six games, Mm -hmm. six 10 man games. And if you were sorry, you could get ran over with the quickness, right? <laughs> yeah. Like you could go out there, spend all that money and just get blasted. But you remembered every game, right? Because you either had morning session or afternoon session. So you either play and, and it was always flip flop. So one day you'd have morning, the next day you'd have afternoon, right? It wasn't like morning, both days or afternoon, both days like we have now, right? Mm-hmm. So you had your morning days. And then when you knew you had afternoon session, that was the night that everybody <laughs> went out, like did mm-hmm. stuff. You know, yeah, whatever uh-huh. they did, uh-huh. right? And then, uh, you know, play your afternoon games, mm-hmm. right? Some guys didn't go to sleep. But then, <laughs> like, you played so few games that every game was very memorable, sure. you know? Yeah. Especially yeah. when you're an amateur team because you two of your um, six right. games were against pro teams, right? So you're always like, you know, when they, when they do the draw or whatever, it's like, okay, which yeah. pro teams are we going to get this time? Mm-hmm. You know, and I always thought that that was really cool, mm-hmm. you know, because you, you got your shot at the at the big dogs. And if mm-hmm. you were an amateur team that beat a pro team at one of those tournaments, everybody heard about. It. Yep. Yeah, for you sure. Know? Yeah, so I, I, I always love- thought that, that was really cool. I agree, Todd. I think that that's something that we should think about incorporating somehow is like it, it's amazing when you get to have that experience, like you said, playing against the best guys in the world or the top ranked teams and you're an up and coming player and. And then that could be that moment for that team or that player, you know, playing against that team. And like you said, everybody knows if you drop the ball against, you know, them, <laughs> you're like, oh, no. <laughs> Dude, we need the N1 mixtape bus, you know, like the Ooh. summer bus, you know, call the HK dudes, tell them that we need the bus. Yep. Right. <laughs> and we'll get 10 dudes and we'll travel to different local fields and we'll play the locals. All right. You want to show up play against tight. the pros? Yeah. Let's do it. Dude, that would be tight. Genius. Remember the N1 mixtape, right? Yes, like, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Travel on the bus. They'd play the locals in the parking lot, and yeah. then whoever was the best, right? They they put them on the team, and then yeah. they play inside the stadium that uh, at night. <laughs> Bro, that'd be epic. This yeah. is genius, oh, man. We can yeah. travel. We you know, need to revive the bus. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. You're going to oh, have to yeah. and play for that one. What do you want? Ten man X ball, uh-huh. we got it. Uh-huh. Let's do it. Seven man. I miss seven man. Seven man? Mm-hmm. I miss seven man. I really do. Mm-hmm. Fun game. Oh, Todd was and a bus driver. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> How many seven mans have you won? You've you've probably got a couple of those under your belt. Oh yeah. I mean, I was lucky uh to play on Dynasty, so there's definitely yeah. a few. Yeah, you got you got quite a few of those under your belt there. Um yeah. when I mean, it was, it was so much fun, man. Mm-hmm. It, it was uh, those years, I mean, Seven Man uh, started in 2003, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And I came to the team in 2004, and they had one in 2003, and then 2004 was, you know, being back playing with the guys that I'd played with every weekend, you know, being back playing with, uh, you know, all my friends was so much fun. Um, and then I hurt my knee uh, at the, the, actually my very first practice with Dynasty, uh, I tore my PCL, but I played that, that whole season. And then had surgery at the end of 2004. Uh, and then, so I missed basically all of 2005. And, you know, I rushed coming back from my knee surgery um, in 2005. I wanted to play so bad. Um, it was a 12 month injury. And I tried to come back in seven months, uh, re injured my knee. Uh, you know, I, I was able to strengthen it, but it, I was never like as fast as I used to be. But, you know, I still got like, it took me, if I'd have done like the full 12 months of rehab you know, I probably would have been better, but I didn't really start feeling really good until like the end of 2006, you know, because 2006 was the first year. Well, I'd say the middle of 2006 because uh, I played Texas. That's where uh, allegedly I crashed a golf cart. That didn't happen, you know, <laughs> really stole it. I didn't crash it, you know. Seeing a pattern with I these got, golf carts. Yeah, I got suspended uh, in 2006, so I missed – uh, a couple tournaments and oh, then yeah, I was really that's really right. to play amateur somebody stole the die cart that's how <laughs> i got on uh, <laughs> that's right, I, I mean golf carts start up missing all the time you know what i mean like, <laughs> who's to say that somebody took it that wasn't supposed to be driving right but uh that's how i got on aftermath right because yeah, me and mike okay. and my friends for so long so they're like you can play uh but you can't play pro so him was like, yo, play with Aftermath. And then we mm-hmm. played those last uh, uh, couple of tournaments Aftermath and had a blast. Yeah. You know, the Ochoas. The Ochoas. Shout out to the Ochoas one time. Um, so you started on Dynasty in, in 04, is that right? I started on Dynasty in 04. Um, yeah. I was going to go back uh, at the end of 02. Um, after mm-hmm. I was going to go in 02. Um, but uh, Chuck Hench was like, uh, you know, you should just come at the end of the year because I, I had left Avalanche, right? Because mm. um, uh, they suspended me. We were going to let me go to Atlantic City. And I was like, well, I'm going to Atlantic City. You know, there's only five <laughs> tournaments. Like, I'm not missing a tournament. So I just bought a plane ticket to Atlantic City. And uh, I got on with uh, uh, Rennick was like, yo, you don't have a team? I'm like, I'm gonna go play with Dynasty. And they told me no. So I was like, Rennick's like, well, you can play with us. And I was like, I'll play with you guys then. Hell yeah. Yeah. And I played with Af- uh, with Aftershock in Atlantic City. Um, and then I played with Aftershock in World Cup. And that's when we won World Cup in 2002 with Aftershock. And this, and then, ties, this ties in with like push and the nostalgia yeah. and, and the most amazing thing in the world to me as a paintball player. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen that movie just because every day after school, when I was a kid, I would go home and pop that VHS in and just sit there for hours and watch it over and over and over and over. It was the best movie oh, yeah. I've ever seen. Even to this day, I still watch it and I'm like, gosh, damn, this is such a good paintball film. And yeah. um you guys changed a lot of people's lives. Like, just like I said earlier, when you're tying your headband in the mirror and getting ready and just like, just the the vibe that you guys brought to the paintball scene was just historical. And it will last forever in the paintball lineage, what you guys did during that time. It was amazing. So, yep. that push, was, uh, push was when I was on the Ironman at World Cup. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 99. And, and then Aftershock, so... You went to Aftershock a season after Aftershock that. Aftershock at the end. I left Avalanche uh, at the end of uh, 2002 mm-hmm. and went to Aftershock. And then after we won World Cup, I had built a you know good relationship with those guys. And I felt bad leaving, right? So it 
kind of delayed, you know, going back to dynasty and, you know, I got shit from all my friends about it, you know, but there's a whole, another whole different emotional side story to that whole thing. You know, I don't really want to yeah. get into that. <laughs> yeah. We can't go on, but it's kind yeah. of boring and happy and lame, but mm. you know, I ended up staying there. Um, you know, I had a good relationship with those guys. And then I ended up playing uh, the beginning of 2003 with them and then leaving before 2003 ended and going and playing with Dynasty for World Cup. But my first practice before World Cup, when I came and played with Dynasty, and those were the guys, you know, that I had played with all of 99 as the Iron Kids, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, and basically me and that group of guys, they all moved down to San Diego and we all played together every weekend both days you know they're all my best friends um i finally came to the team at the end of 2003 and my very first practice with uh dynasty is when we went up to bob long's house and i tore my pcl oh my god oh. yep so Damn, dude. i never played on dynasty at like 100%. my full potential you know yeah so i did that then i played 04 and then got surgery at the end of 04 i remember walking out of qualcomm knowing i had surgery the next week um you know when we left uh left called the tournament the mppl at qualcomm stadium and yeah had surgery and then rushed it back and then i started like kind of like feeling myself um mm -hmm. at the end of uh 2006 yeah you know, yeah kind of bob, bob long's house was uh that's some terrain out there i can definitely see how someone could get injured there too because that yeah. that ground out there was brutal it was terrible we went there three times and left with three major injuries yeah so i was first right kenny and then kenny. do you remember kenny rosenberg oh that's one that i feel real bad for like i i continued to play but i felt really bad for kenny kenny was stomping people right he was four foot one ran 107 miles an hour yeah. you know and could stand behind a small cake right and we go yeah. up there we're playing against you know you guys bob's team yeah and uh three points into the day kenny falls down steps in a hole like i did and hurts his leg mm -hmm. and we're like oh kenny uh, are you okay like you want to go to the hospital and he's a young guy you know didn't want to you know mm -hmm. say he's, you know that he's yeah. really actually hurt you know and at the end of the day he sat in a fold-out chair with his goggles on the entire day from point three to the rest of the day. Then we finally get in the car, go back to the hotel. And I'm like, yo, I'm gonna take you to the hospital right now. All right, so I put Kenny, you know, in the car, we drive to the hospital, he gets some x-rays done and his femur on the x-ray looked like this. Bro, Dude, no, that's your son taking necks. The whole day, the whole day. And I that's was crazy. like, oh my God. This kid must be tough as nails, you know. You know what just, I'm saying? No, dude. Bob. Bob told him. I remember I was right there. Bob told him to like pretty much called him out and was like, "Bro, you need to like toughen up or whatever." And Bob told him to go sit in his truck. And Kenny like sat in the truck for a while, and then he was like out next to the field watching. The dude's leg was snapped in half, and he had an X leg. And I was the he, first one to see the x-ray dude it was so nasty oh, oh my god he's the toughest dude ever uh i talked to kenny about that actually because I, I would go to pacific beach and hang out with him and spica and short uh down there trust and, island uh, yeah yeah <laughs> trust island. <laughs> yeah shout out to the trust island and uh man dude that that dude is is tough as nails to sit through that mm -hmm. and yeah it was heartbreaking too because um that was like Kenny, Kenny was the real deal. You know, he's, he was, yeah. like you said, four foot, nothing, a hundred thousand miles an hour, just yep. full charge. Yeah. Yeah. So me first practice with dynasty, Kenny, that was Kenny's tryout to get on dynasty. Mm. Right. And then, uh, Tyler Michaud, when Tyler came to the, mm -hmm. uh, the dynasty was on top of his game. We go to Bob's house and we even said it beforehand, like, yo, we probably should go to Bob's house. Somebody dies every time we go there, you know, like, and mm. Tyler broke his wrist, mm. broke his wrist, diving into that corner. Yeah. You know, it's like, I'm never coming back here ever again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, never rough. Again. it's rough. Yeah. I think that if I wasn't still made of Play-Doh at the age of like 13, that I probably would have broken a lot more stuff or like injured myself a lot more, but we would find yeah. like rocks and like just gnarly stuff out in the field there. And, and Bob was, <laughs> Bob was just like, good luck, you know, 
have fun out there. Yeah, I love that people think that we play on nice grass and turf our entire life. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. we just started playing on turf in like 2006, 2007. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yep. when I built my field, uh, you know, Raza Park up at Mr. Paintball, you know, mm-hmm. we laid down turf. Like, that was the first time that I felt like we actually played on a flat level nice field you know marcello yeah. was on the ironman he was still playing at velocity in the dirt yep. right <laughs> um, i'm pretty sure i mean when i was playing at sc village you know dirt. all those years it was like it felt like kitty litter it was like <laughs> sand like you couldn't stay in a bunker for too long because the hot sun was cooking the kitty litter yeah. sand and, it was getting all of your pads, and you were all chafed up you know what I mean? Because we're playing with neoprene, you know, so you're cooking, you're sweating, and you got this shit all in your gun and all in your pads and shit that's just rubbing you raw, you know? So you're like, I got to get out of here. You know, it's probably one of the reasons why we're like, you know, tried to move around a little bit more, but, yeah. you know, we did not play on nice surfaces. You know, mm-hmm. we play, if we played 10, 15 game, 10 man games in a day, you'd go home, beat the shit. <laughs> Straight up, dude. Funny, I, I, you know, anytime I'm at another field working with a team or, or doing a <laughs> clinic and I hear them complaining about their field, I'm looking around, I'm like, this is pretty nice turf. <laughs> you yeah. know, I'm like, you have yeah. no idea yeah. <laughs> what oh, we man. grew up throwing our bodies and around. Top's house was like rocks, rocks, <laughs> you know, old railroad ties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the guy stuck at Thomas Taylor's knee from Dallas. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> and, and then like, even Rich Telford's field, like at, at Extreme, you know, they didn't have turf or anything. It was like cement. It, you were just running yeah. on cement, diving into the cement. It was crazy. And now, yeah, now we have it so nice, and uh, we've all we've gone soft. <laughs> yeah, we, there didn't even be dimensions. You know, sometimes yeah. you play on fields that had like one side was longer than the other. You know, it was like a bowling alley. You know, yeah. not a perfect rectangle. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Yeah. Dimensions. You just pace it out and you hope that one guy's legs aren't longer than the other when they're doing it. You know, this looks about right. That's about good. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Dude, that's crazy. Yeah. We've we've definitely come a long way with, uh, with everything in paintball to be where we're at right now. And, you know, um, hopefully if we're heading in the right direction, we can get this, this real deal paintball athleticism branded to the world and really start to make some big pushes into the future here. Because I think that I think it's ready. I think it's time. Um, paintball deserves the credibility that that so many people out there know it deserves, just because of how difficult it is, and and the fact that it is. You know, we've talked to countless true pro athletes that play paintball, and it is a real sport. It's really difficult, and it takes a lot of effort to be really good at this game. Um, I just I'm excited for the future to see. You know, when it when it pops, and when we can start um, getting that credibility for the game. You know. Yeah. I think a big thing for me, you know, and I know Tyler, you've been, you've always been a real positive guy, but you've always been outwardly expressive about positivity, Mm. you know, and, you know, with losing Tim Montressor here, you know, last year, you know, I always remember I'd go to tournaments and, you know, if I was like down or, you know, I'd be upset about something else, you know, at home and I'd bring it with me to the tournament, you know, Tim would always be like, Hey man, power of positivity. You know, I complain about it being raining or, you know, Mm -hmm. this, that, and the other, just find something to complain about. Tim would always be like, Hey man, you know, like, let's just be positive about it. And I know you've always been like that, you know, and especially, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, very outwardly expressive about it over the past, you know, at least five years, just really picking people up and, you know, bringing that big energy. And, you know, this year, you know, beginning of last year, and then, you know, we had the big long break, but, you know, the beginning of this year, like I've really tried to commit to being positive about everything, you know, and just try and spread that, you know, like not just to be so competitive all the time, every time about every single thing, you know, and really hope that everybody has success and that everybody does well, because that's how we're going to grow it. You know, that's how we're going to expand, you know, when, when we're all working together, you know, and maybe not necessarily hand in hand on the day-to-day basis, but just, you know, outwardly hoping and, you know, promoting positivity and, you know, Mm -hmm. wanting to see everybody succeed, you know, as a whole, instead of, you know, I'm going to get mine, you know? So I think that that's a big thing and you do a good job of it. Marcelo, you could do a good job of it. And, you know, uh, I appreciate you cash. You know, it's, it's good for that. So. 
that mean that means the world to me dude yeah and and i know to marsh as well and you know we just we're just in love with this game just like everybody out there i'm sure who's who's tuning into this and we want nothing but the best for this community all all aspects of it and i know that there's a lot going on on the back end of everything and and there's a lot of things that i don't know about and that's fine too but i know that what we have is a beautiful game and this beautiful game deserves more it deserves notoriety it deserves to be in the same category as some of the the real sports i believe just because it is, you know, really a game that will test you on so many levels. And uh, it takes a lot of skill set and a lot of hard work. And, and it, it just, it's time, you know, it's time for paintball to get to get its day to where people look at it and say, damn, look at that shot or damn, look at that guy running around, you know, navigating the field with his buddies there. It's, it's just, a, it's a really special thing that I think the world will really consume as well, because it's, it's entertaining at the very core of it too watching that yeah. game get played out. And there's a lot of potential for it, right? Because mm -hmm. paintball, like we always say, you can be male, female, tall, short, skinny, ugly, you know, mm -hmm. black, white, purple, blue, green, like it doesn't matter. You know, yeah. we have the most potential to grow because anybody can do it. You know, now we've made it easier for younger people to play. Um, yeah. And, you know, it, we can play it together all over the world in several different formats. There's not a field that it has to be this size or, you know, uh, it's designed a certain way. You can play paintball anywhere, you know, in yeah. any different way, in a million different ways. And, mm -hmm. you know, as long as we do the right things, then we can see that happen. Yeah, absolutely. I know we all started playing in the, in like the woods and like, you know, hyperball, that kind of stuff. It wasn't air ball that, that initially hooked us, you know? Yeah, that's why everybody's having so much fun going back and playing these 10 mans. Yeah. You know, guys that haven't played in 10 years are back out there playing again, and it's great. Mm -hmm. So good for the game. So good mm -hmm. for the game. All yeah. kinds of paintball are fun, you know, and, and again, that's the type of paintball that we fell in love with. So it's interesting that we had gotten so far away from it for a bit, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Todd, I do, I want to touch on uh, how you got into, you know, you transitioned your career from, you know, a top level player and, and decided to become one of the best coaches, in my opinion, to ever do it. Uh, injuries. <laughs> Injury. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of so, forced your hand there. Yeah. So I went to uh, um, Infamous in uh, 2010. Mm -hmm. And the very first practice, you were there. We go and uh, we're decided that we're going to have a, uh, um, well, I get the bright idea to merge Infamous and Aftermath. Exactly. Right. Yeah, that's how I was like, it. we're going to merge infamous and aftermath. And, uh, you know, we're going to go have a practice. It was in like late December, or early January. And we go up to um, a field called ASG and they had turf, but it was a uh, really slippery turf. Right. And we go out there and we're playing, you know, we got our, our guys together and, uh, you know, we're playing and it's like the very end of the day. Um, I'm playing on this field. I'm playing and I'm like in the corner. I see a dude running up the middle. So I run to the back center. I shoot him on the run. I see another dude coming up the wire. So I go to run back to the corner. And as I'm running, I see the dude that I shot coming at me with hits all over him. And I go to pump the brakes so I could shoot him again. And I slipped on that turf and I tore my MCL in my other knee. So I was like, oh man, like I felt it. You know, I could tell that something was wrong. Um, it was super sore for, you know, over a month. And I was like, well, you know, I, I'm going to have to go in and have surgery again. But I was like, man, I'm not ready to have surgery right now, but I want to play. And so I contemplated having surgery and I waited and I waited. And then uh, I started coaching uh, because I didn't want to play uh, on basically torn ligaments in both knees because I never I tore my PCL in my right knee again and I didn't have it fixed. So now I have torn ligaments in both knees. And I started coaching and I had a blast, you know, you were on the team that year. Mm -hmm. um, I had so much fun, you know, getting to, you know, pick and choose like to still be part of the game, but, you know, to make big decisions for, you know, the overall performance of the team and what we were going to do. And I honestly just got hooked uh, and at the end of the year. I was like, well, I can have surgery again, you know, or I can just continue to do this and be a part of it. And I was like, you know, I don't want to have knee surgery again. I'm, I'm over it. And I also, honestly, you know, another big factor of it was 
I felt like cheating was just running rampant in the game. And I felt like, you know, I dedicated a lot of time to being the best player that I possibly could. And I felt that it was kind of bullshit that I could bust my ass and go out there and be the best that I could be and get cheated uh, and lose a tournament, you know, because yeah. it happened so many times. And, you know, I was just sick of watching it happen. And I'm like, man, I don't, you know, I know there's cheating in every sport, but I just feel like, and I still feel like sometimes it's, you know, like a big part of the game and I don't think it should be. And I don't think that it gets caught enough. I don't think that, you know, players are going to do what they can get away with. But I was tired of, you know, really working super, super hard and then, you know, not getting a fair shake. Mm -hmm. So I was like, man, I'm not going to I'm not going to kill myself, you know, having knee surgeries and rehabbing and doing all this stuff. You know, I've been playing paintball for a long time and I really enjoyed coaching. So I decided that I would just, you know, keep coaching because I was continue to have a good time. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's like almost like an, an entirely separate career equally as successful as your playing career, which is crazy to say, you know, like you've had so much 10 years. Yeah. It's been 10 years. I've been coaching for 10 years, Yeah, which I didn't expect that, you know, I didn't expect Mm -hmm. to be coaching for 10 years, you know, and here we are. Yeah. Yeah. But it was challenging, right? It Mm -hmm. was just as challenging as playing. It made me have to work on something uh, and work hard at it in a different way. I find myself going to the WCPPLs, uh, asking to like coach teams so that I could, uh, get practice for when I went and coached, uh, infamous, you know, yeah, or vicious yeah, well. or, you know, whichever team I was coaching. Like I took, uh, I took a year off in I think 15 when, uh, vicious, uh, broke up, you know, vicious ended, stopped mm-hmm. playing mm-hmm. and then started again in 16 when I got the opportunity to coach the Ironman. But I mean, other than that, it's really just been, you know, a, a, a really fun, enjoyable way to be competitive and something to, you know, practice and work hard at to be good at. What do you, cause something I think you've always done really well is, you, well, one, you're, you're really good at inspiring your players. You, you know how to get the most out of your players. I, I enjoyed playing for you those years on infamous because you're the type of coach that like, I want to go get it out there for you. You know, I want to come in, get that high five from you. And, and I also know that you're going to hold me accountable if I don't. Um, and I've always thrived with that. You know, that's how my Kinman was, um, you know, Shane was, was very similar. Um, and that's something that I do think some of the coaches lack is the ability to, to get the most out of their players. How, how have you been able to kind of channel that? Um, well, so one is I watch a lot of sports, right? I've been a big sports guy forever. And I, I watch a lot of, uh, or watch and listen to a lot of, Um, talk radio sports talk radio right but you know you watch a lot of sports you know you watch a lot of games you know you get those snippets from the coaches you know and the the sports casters and you know I would use that stuff to practice my broadcasting but I would also take those things those little snippets you know and in other sports and apply them to paintball Uh, so a lot of it's just you know just being a big sports guy you know and, and taking those pieces and watching a lot of World Series, a lot of Super mm-hmm. Bowls, a lot of playoffs, NBA Finals, and stuff like that. And you know, just watching, following sports, and see how people win in other sports. But I give a lot of credit to when I played basketball in high school, and I might have told you guys about this before. But when I started uh, playing varsity in uh, high school, my coach came to my school, and that was his first year there as well. And he became the athletic director, but he came from the University of San Diego. His name was Mike Hopp. He was a, like a local San Diego legend, played for Mira Mesa High School, probably would have played in the NBA if he hadn't torn uh, his ACL. Like back in the day, you know, you tear an ACL and you got a scar in your knee that's, mm-hmm. you know, six feet long, right? Technology back then wasn't the same as it is today. Mm-hmm. And so he comes, to the, he comes to our school. He takes over as the coach. And he's coming from a college program teaching high school kids, right? And the way that he taught is basically the way that I try and teach, you know, because as a young kid, I felt like I didn't really understand at the time the way that he was teaching us things. It didn't click until way later when I started getting into paintball. And I would take those lessons that I learned from basketball and I would apply them to paintball but I didn't really understand those things until much later. You know, I would say, you know, even like towards the end of college, right? 
and after college. Um, and then when he came as a coach, he brought in other coaches that came to teach us. One of them was a guy named Joe Prunty. Um, he was Jason Kidd's assistant um, for the Milwaukee Bucks for a long time. Um, he coached with Greg Popovich and the Spurs um, for a while. Um, and then another guy, his name was Chris Grant. He played for uh, the University of San Diego. He went to the NBA as well as uh, like a film coordinator, worked his way up. He ended up being the general manager of the Cleveland Cavaliers. So when I was young, you know, I, I mean, I, I always listened, you know, like I was always taking everything, you know, but I didn't always necessarily understand process it. And I didn't apply it to paintball until I really started playing, you know, professionally, um, you know, deep in the professional game. Right. But they just taught me a lot of lessons and the way that they taught, the way that they talked, the way that they held people accountable, um, the way that, you know, we did drills and, you know, disciplined ourselves, you know, that was the reason why I think I'm able to coach. And I think that was the reason why I had success as a player um, because the things that I couldn't do in, in basketball, I was able to do in paintball and I was able to make those connections, but having high level coaches, right. In, in other sports, like if you know how to correlate, um, you know, one sport to another, and really at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what the sport is. It's really just the, the mentality. It's the, uh, mantra, it's the discipline, it's the focus, it's your preparation. Um, you know, having those guys that came from high level backgrounds and, you know, were clearly capable as they, you know, ended up in the NBA, you know, just the discipline and focus that those guys taught, you know, showed me um, that that's what you need to do to be successful. So that makes you hungry for more. You know, I would always go and find other people um, that, you know, listen to other coaches, listen to other players, you know, cause we've been fortunate enough to, you know, be around for the Kobe, the LeBron, mm -hmm. um, you know, I got to watch Michael Jordan when I was a kid, you know, like you get to see what it is that those guys put in that separate themselves from other people, but having coaches like firsthand teach you certain things and learn a certain way in order to develop certain players then, you know, that stuff, you know, really rubs off on you. And then later, you know, you kind of really figure out and apply as you grow and mature, how those things are basically just principles of sports. And like we Absolutely. said earlier, sports is just a metaphor for life. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to be successful at your job. Well, you're not going to do well at your job if you sit on the couch all day. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you have to grind, you have to put in the time, you have to not cheat yourself, right? At the end of the day, it's up to you. You know, you want to put in the time to be good at something, then you got to put in the time. Otherwise, it's not just going to happen. That's got to do the work. And I'll give you the quote right here. I've, I've heard this one a few years back. And, uh, you know, I love to tell everybody this one. You know, character drives talent to greatness, not the other way around. I've seen plenty of talented guys that were talented but didn't care, didn't go anywhere. And I saw that firsthand plenty of times in basketball and paintball absolutely right? you got to have character and talent if you're going to be special yeah yeah and we we mm -hmm. see like we travel and and we're you know trying to nurture the grassroots of the future of the game and that is the biggest thing for me i gotta see that you care about the process and that your character is big enough to to handle the task at hand because like i said you're going into war and you got to be ready for all that that encompasses that with your brothers out there and when you care about the process and you have a big, you know, passion for the game and your, your character's there and you're in the right place, then it's going to carry you through those times that are going to be difficult and you're going to be able to transcend and become an all-star or, you know, one of the best players of your team when you do that. 100%. Yeah, man. man absolutely. It's huge. And it is so relatable to life. We say it all the time on the show, you know, if, if you know what it takes to get become really good at a sport you know what it takes to become really good at just about anything you know you know how to break down and dissect all the little details and and put in that extra attention and effort and everything that goes with it yeah yep how about players todd what do you look for in players i, I think i think we'd probably just answered that character and talent <laughs> yeah character man you know you, you look for the guys that work hard but i think one of the things that i love is being able to see looking for talent you know like it yeah. takes a, a special eye, you know, like you guys, you know, 
you can you can watch people play and instantly be like, this guy knows how to. This guy knows what's up, right? Mm-hmm. This guy gets it, right? Mm-hmm. But sometimes it takes a couple more times of watching a guy play to realize, you know, what it is that he does well, mm-hmm. but then what he needs to do to be better, right? Mm-hmm. So again, like just like you know, with 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 all players, you know, that's why I love the game. I love players. You know, because you never know when somebody's going to surprise you, right? Mm-hmm. You know, being able to see, you know, a guy that has raw natural talent, you know, is one thing, but then seeing like what motivates somebody to be good, you know, what motivates somebody to be great. You know, that's why I love being a coach because, you know, I get to walk around and watch people play and, yeah. You know, sometimes you can tell a lot from, you know, the way guys carry themselves, their attitude and how they talk and how they listen. Mm. Yeah, man. It's a special role, dude. Um, and Marcelo gets to coach a lot of teams. I coach some teams here and there, but I honestly, I can't wait for the day when, when I can dive more fully into that role of, of coaching. Cause it is, it's a very special time and it, the dude, it's difficult. That's not easy. You got a hard job. And, and while we're talking about it, um, we actually, this is kind of breaking world news. We got a new coach. Is it, is it, is it okay for us to absolutely let it rip, dude? If we, if we don't, if we don't, Ryan's going to do it Monday morning. So (laughs) yeah, Yeah, gotcha, brother. Um, so welcome to the dynasty family, skinny Kevin. Boom. Yeah. SK. We got him. SK. He's back. He, he was uh he was in Cabo ripping it up over the weekend, so <laughs> he didn't get to make it to practice. <laughs> but I think he's gonna he's gonna slide right in. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. Kenny Kevin actually coached uh one of the years that I was still on the team. Oh yeah, really? and I know wow. Kenny cool. Kevin has a passion for it. Um mm-hmm. he coached damage, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, coached dynasty, and um he coached yeah. uh, a few teams over in Europe. And I know he misses it, so I'm actually glad that he's getting that opportunity to come back again because yeah. he's a dynasty guy through and through mm-hmm. and uh, never played for another team, right? Yeah. And, you know, he is uh, he's a blue blood for sure. And to be able to bring <laughs> back, you know, dynasty royalty would be yeah. uh, amazing for the team and for him. So congrats to Skinny Kevin. Yeah, Skinny. Let's go, baby. Yeah, he was it's in Mexico. my job harder now. I was hoping <laughs> yeah. you guys were running around out there, you know, with no help. Ryan trying to coach and play at the same time, yelling at all you guys. You guys are idiots. You don't know what you're doing. Alex is like, you're an idiot. No, you're an idiot. And they all yell at each other. I'm like, ah. <laughs> don't worry. I guess I don't get that. I guess I don't get that. Yeah. No, yeah. it'll it'll probably still happen. It'll, 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 it'll still happen. Like yeah. <laughs> so, Tizzle, what what is one of the hardest aspects of coaching pro paintball? Um, and on the flip side of the coin, what is one of the most rewarding aspects? Um, well, I said to answer your first question, um, the hardest thing is building a culture, right? Mm -hmm. Um, that's why I take pride in the teams that I've coached because Mm -hmm. when I started coaching infamous, um, we brought two teams together, you know, teams that had had success, you know, but weren't like dominant. Right. And so when you bring in half guys from over here and half guys from over here and they haven't played together before, you know, we have to establish that culture that that everybody buys into and gets everybody on the same page. What was difficult coaching the Ironman over the last four years was that every year we had four brand new guys, you know, whether guys leave you know, uh, go to another team impact steals half my team, you know, uh, we pick up new guys, you know, um, guys retire, you know, like it's always hard to, you know, establish a culture and maintain culture and, and, um, build consistency. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, no offense to the Ironmen, you know, but like it was difficult, right. The first year, you know, I come in and it's dudes that have been on the team for a long time, but hadn't won anything. Right. Mm -hmm. I had to come in and find out who actually really wanted to be a professional paintball player, who wanted to be the best they could be and who wanted to be an Ironman. Mm -hmm. Right. Because Marcelo, you know, you know, being on the Ironman, there was a culture that was there ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason why I accepted the job to come back and coach the Ironman was because I felt like I had unfinished business. I played two tournaments, three tournaments with the Ironman, then I left to go to Avalanche. 
Yeah. And I felt like I, I left Oliver hanging, you know, I felt like I left uh, Maddie and Davey hanging, you know, when, um, you know, Oliver had, was staying at my house, you know, we, we were best friends. And then I just up and leave to Avalanche, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I felt like, you know, I needed to come back and, and have unfinished business, but going to the Ironman, you know, you know, like you're trying to live up to the history of the guys in the nineties, you know, it's like the same with aftershock. There's a yeah. culture there, you know, there's a built-in culture, you know, dynasty now has a built-in culture, you know, they're winning is the only thing, you know, there's yeah. mm -hmm. nothing else is acceptable. Right. Mm -hmm. And so coming in like first year, you know, I got to, you know, find, you know, who wants to be there and who doesn't, who wants to be an Ironman, who doesn't. And then the next year we try and bring in some talent, you know, and try and, you know, build that culture, maintain that culture. And then we lose a bunch of guys, you know, cut some guys, you know, bring in more guys. Right. And it's mm -hmm. just like, we did that every year I was there. And then the team that exists now, I was so happy about that team. Right. I was so happy because I finally found guys that all really liked each other, really bought into the program, really understood what it was to be an Ironman, and were willing to make the sacrifices that were needed to win tournaments, right? And we had that team, and then uh, A-Rod came in, and he really was a great leader for the guys that we had, and it was all about that locker room. Finding guys that are willing to subjugate their egos for the betterment of the team, put the team first, put the guy next to you first and really make it all about the team's overall success. And then, um, you know, the pandemic hit and, you know, shit happens and we did not get to play another tournament with the team that we had, yeah. you know, and that pissed me off. So that was hard. Right. And now I go to heat and they have a culture built in, right. They're used to winning. Right. Mm -hmm. The Ironman guys, you know, we were just getting it. They were just understanding it. And then we had success. Well, I'm now coaching a team that has um, a, a bunch of guys that have not only played together for 15 years, but in the last eight years has been, you know, 70, 60, 70, 80% the same team and has had success, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the hardest thing is building a culture. Right. The hardest thing is, is building that culture and finding the guys that want it. And then, you know, to come in and have a team that's already been a part of it to like come in and fit into that culture. What was the second question? Oh, just uh, the most rewarding aspect of the most coaching. rewarding. Yeah. The most rewarding is taking a team, building a culture and winning yeah. a tournament. Hell yeah. And I honestly felt like, you know, when I coached infamous, um, we had a bunch of really good guys, a lot of talent, and I felt like we worked hard and we won tournaments, right? That's it. And yeah. we won a couple tournaments. We won a couple NXLs and we won, uh, uh, I think, one or two seven mans. Mm -hmm. And then I went to Vicious, right? Vicious. They were had a, uh, a lot of talent, right? But they had not performed in the pro level. You know, they're at the bottom yeah. of the ranks, you know? And I took them to the finals. They'd never been to the finals before, you know? Mm -hmm. And the rewarding part is taking a team from the lower levels, taking them to the top, but really getting guys to buy in to what mm -hmm. you want to do and then watching them go out there and execute it. Because I'm not, I don't get to play. I don't get to shoot anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, I just get to say, hey, this is what I think we should do, you know? And then it's on them to take it, take it in, think about it, commit to it, and then go execute it, right? Yeah. So, you know, we go vicious and I thought we could have won a tournament. You know, we played infamous in the finals, you yeah. know, it was 20 degrees out there. There was some bad calls and mm -hmm. I thought we could have won that tournament, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that then- was fun. Uh, Those were fun events to watch when you were involved with vicious. That was, that was a great sure. time. Those kids all had talent. Yeah. They really did. I don't know if any of them would have fit in on other teams, but as a group, they were great guys. Yeah. Zach, Parker, Brian, Hooker, Shane, mm -hmm. like those were really good players, but they were a really good group. They really cared for each other. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they really bought into what I, what I wanted to do. And then I go to the Ironman. Right. And it's, it's hard because of so much turnover. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. But I also went and started coaching in Europe and I coached breakout and we went to the finals. We should have won a tournament, 
But uh, the Millennium rigged ass refs completely butt <laughs> fucked us, right? And gave the Russians uh, the game, right? They tried to screw us in the Tauntauns game, but uh, Fedorov, you know, outplayed the refs. And then they screwed us in the Russians game that we should have won, you know? Yeah. So the most rewarding thing is taking a team, you know, from the lower tiers and going to the top and winning tournaments. Mm-hmm. You know, I had one yeah. pro, you know, and like we always used to joke about this one pro. Uh, a big fat German guy, a couple Belgian guys, and you know, and and we we beat top teams. You know, mm-hmm, we beat, mm-hmm. you know, we beat all, all the best Euro teams. We beat the Russians. Like, yeah, you know, we that that's what's rewarding. You know, mm-hmm. getting to the top when you put in the time. You know, and yeah, you know, with with Ironman, it took me four years, but we finally put that group of guys together, and then we won a tournament. Absolutely, uh, one of our one of our followers texas hammer he wants to know what attracted you to houston heat um what was the x factor practice like you guys just had there and and you don't have to answer if you don't want but he's wondering why what happened with the iron man that that led to kind of you going to heat if you want to talk about that uh well guys with names like texas hammer you know what I mean? <laughs> like i just want to be around a bunch of texas hammers you know what i mean that's what i'm talking about right um with the Iron Man, I guess it was just a difference. <laughs> With the Iron Man, it was, it was a difference in philosophy. You know, I guess, yeah. uh, you know, I, like I said, you know, I, I went in and I told those guys that I really wanted to keep, you know, keep our team together, you know, and, you know, we couldn't make that happen. So I just, you know, I told them, like, I, I just didn't want to go through another rebuild. You know, I'd, I'd spent four years doing rebuilds and, you know, like after a while and, you know, we won a tournament with the guys that we had. And, you know, it, it felt like we were about to go into a rebuild again. And I just didn't want to do it, mm-hmm. you know? So I was like, ah, you know, it's probably time for me to move on. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, also it was the pandemic, right. It was crazy. Uh, we yeah. were all working from home, you yeah. know, uh, you know, we're, our office was at die. We moved out of die and, you know, I just kind of needed to, you know, save money and, you know, not have that office. So I moved out, but, you it's know, crazy. I think. Yeah. I thank Dave and I thank Di for everything that they did for me uh, when I came to the team because, you know, we were struggling a little bit and, um, you know, Dave and Chris were very welcoming and they took me in, they took my company in and, uh, you know, really helped us survive. So, you know, I have no bad blood with those guys, you know, like the team that they have now is the team that I built. Right. Yeah. And a bunch yeah. of guys that I'm really close with and I have a lot of respect for, and um, you know, they helped me get a win for the Ironman. Yeah um going to houston we played, heat. we played them all this weekend great you you did man you handpicked a, a great group of guys that that just love They're paintball awesome. and and got heart yeah yeah and i appreciate that and i, and I still yeah. think they'll be successful you know yeah uh, going to houston heat uh was really easy you know i i had a conversation um with randy and uh, you know i told him that i wanted to coach the team and um you know he was all about it they wanted to have a coach um, I've known all those guys forever, you know, so the transition was really easy. Um, they've been very welcoming. Um, they have a great culture, a great family. And, um, you know, they've uh, taken care of me very well. Um, mm-hmm. Chad Boucher is a guy that, uh, you know, I've really um, had a special relationship with for a long time, you know, because I remember when he came up on, uh, came up playing pro, you know, he was on after, got on aftershock and, you know, he was somebody that always come pick my brain about stuff. Yeah. And you know, we always talked, you know, whenever he had questions or he was down, you know, about playing time, just being a young pro trying to make it in the game, you know, like he would always reach out to me and we'd talk about, you know, his team and what he needed to do and his mindset. And, you yeah. know, when uh, this opportunity came up, you know, he was like, yo, you know, we need a coach, you know, let's do it. And I was like, well, I was all about it. So yeah, um, it worked I know, out great. Man. I'm so proud of yeah, yeah, and all that he's done. He's uh, you know, within the last couple of years, especially, just truly blossomed um, as a not only a player but a personality in the industry, and he's just absolutely crushing it. So big, big ups yeah. to him, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. He's Cash pretty enough mil- to wear leopard. You yeah. know, he's pretty enough to wear leopard. <laughs> in clothing you know what i mean <laughs> we got practice today we went out and did drills 
And he practiced the whole day in a leopard thong, and that was it. <laughs> you know, not going to wear a shirt. And he's just like, no, baby. He's the no shirt guy. Leopard thongs, got to sell it. You know, you yeah. can't see him wearing the leopard thong if he's covered in clothing. You know what I mean? <laughs> like diving out the turf was not a good idea. But I mean, yeah. you gotta, is this on, you these push on the docks? Product. Yeah, push the product. Yeah, absolutely. That's it. <laughs> Well, he's got these new leopard pads coming out, and he, I'm sure he's wearing those. You know, it's, it's leopard everything, leopard the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. He's got yeah, these yeah. new glasses. You know, you put these glasses on, and you see the whole world in leopard. <laughs> you know? I'm telling Revolution you, he's got, he's got some game changing stuff going on here. Leopard Hell socks, yeah. leopard thongs. Yeah. Silk nighty. He's got a silk leopard nighty. You know? <laughs> the whole. He's got leopard it. crop tops. <laughs> all right crop top jersey <laughs> yeah yeah he's got the new crop top the jerseys juice. coming out. <laughs> <laughs> he went on a diet awesome. just so that he could wear the leopard crop top jersey at the event it's <laughs> yeah, a good see look prospect, you know yeah. 20 30 pounds you know leopard crop top, leopard crop top. <laughs> running yeah. through the middle like ezekiel elliott you know what i'm saying <laughs> belly all out <laughs> <laughs> Zeke. <laughs> oh no. Let him have it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, baby. Love it. That's, That's what it's all about right there. Eat him <laughs> up. <laughs> eat him up. Dude. Eat him up or heat him up. Yeah, it, what <laughs> is it? Is, yeah, beat him up. up. <laughs> heat him yeah. up, eat him up, beat him up. That's it. Funny. Keep going. <laughs> Man. Well, so, I got I got a couple more here before before we let Cash Money rock and roll out of here. Um, no problem. We got I know we just had the Texas Hammer in the building. I'm glad that he got his hoo 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 Texas Hammer. Let's go. Texas Hammer. <laughs> Stavi Beats. Uh, he is one of our followers as well. He's Steve. wondering, yeah. Um, who did you anticipate playing the most, um, or that made your blood boil when you were coming up? Any particular? Uh, people that always got a few extra when you would play against them or That's like rivalries question. when you were coming up <laughs> oh man who was your favorite people to play honestly i was a dick you know like <laughs> so this is one thing I'll, I'll tell you you know when i was younger i definitely played angry mm -hmm. right that was that's what motivated me now and i, I kind of said it in a roundabout way, but I, I didn't really think about it earlier, but like, I played angry when I was, when I was younger, you know, I was, I just felt like, you know, I'm out there trying to prove myself, you know? So I tried to shoot the shit out of everybody, mm. you know, I, like I just, it wasn't until later that I realized, you know, that, you know, by getting to go learn from other people, you know, to learn more about paintball and learn more how other guys approach the game, because the way Ironman approached the game, you know, it was all aggression, right? The way that Avalanche approached the game, it was aggression, but then there was some dudes that were like smooth, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, Strange was very methodical, very slow. You'd watch some other guys play, right? But very technical. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you watch the All-Americans play. They had a different style, you know? Yeah. When I was younger, all I cared about was running fast and hitting hard, you know, mm -hmm. like, like when you're a young boxer, you just try to knock people out, right? <laughs> like all I yeah. want to do is just shoot the shit out of everybody. Yeah. And then later you realize, you know, that the game is technical. You know, there's there's different ways to win, you know, and if you approach it differently and you, uh, you know, actually think about things, you know, I mean, I came in as a front guy, right? But then you realize, you know, there's front guys, there's mid guys, there's back guys. And, you know, as being a fan of paintball, you get to watch and you're like, oh, you know, this is how that guy plays, you know, lockout, right? Lockout was a really fun team to watch for me. Like I always wanted, I would dress like them. I, I had a free flow, you know, like shout out to Buddy Bauer, you know, like, um, you know, he, he sponsored me with free flow guns. Like I had a free flow back in the day because I wanted to look like Luke. I wanted to look like Wally, you know, I'd always yeah. go talk to Dan and be like, you know, like Todd Hugo, we got Todd Hugo on Avalanche, you know, and, and won a tournament. Like, you know, I wanted to be like all those guys, you know, I watch Aftershock play and, you know, the, what they wore and how they dressed, you know, like the Shock Tech guns were my favorite guns. Uh, I was on Avalanche and Rennick paid me to wear a Shock Tech headband. And I was like, hell yeah, I'm wearing that Shock Tech headband, you know. Um, Danny Love, still a good friend of mine. You know, I talk to Danny uh, all the time and, 
um, you know, he sent me a dope ass custom one of a kind aftershock uh, autocopter, right? Oh, like, wow. Danny, Danny's the man, you know, like I love the aftershock shock tech style, you know, it mm-hmm. was so dope. Like I just, yeah. I was just a big fan of everybody, you know? So I took everybody's style and made it my own. You know, I mm-hmm. took little pieces from everybody, you know, and, and that's kind of like the same thing I did with coaching. You know, I take a piece of this, a piece of that, a piece of this, right. You know, you follow the the best coaches and you try and copy them. Mike Krzyzewski, Greg Popovich, Bill Belichick, you know, like you just try and follow, watch and copy you know, what other guys are doing, but it's not just do it the way they do it. It's understanding what they do and making it your own. Mm -hmm. Right. And like, it just took a long time to watch all these different guys and get their knowledge and apply it to myself. Right. To be able to play like that. But in the beginning, it was just like, shove it down everybody's throat all the time. And that's Mm -hmm. all I care about. Yeah. 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 Bunker them out, get them off the field. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, man. You got to play with emotion, you know, it's definitely yeah. part of the game. Definitely yeah. part of the game. Well, I know that Marcelo kind of approaches it in a, in a very similar way. Like you, you try to talk to this guy before a game, he might knock your teeth in if he's, if he's in the, I'm not going to do if, all that, but I know it's like Nick, <laughs> Nick, <laughs> Nick Sloviak used to piss me off more than anyone in the league. I, before I knew, who, like, I couldn't stand Nick Sloviak when I was a kid, you know, it, even up until like maybe five or six years ago when I really started to get to know him because we'd be getting ready for a match and here he comes, you know, I'm sitting there with my headphones in here. He comes prancing on over laughing, big old beard, jolly looking dude hitting me like, Hey, what's up? What are you doing? What are you doing? What do you think I'm doing, bro? I'm trying <laughs> like, leave me alone. Get yeah. out of here. Still like that. <laughs> you still like that, but he's like, he's one yeah. of my favorite people in the world now. He's just a good, great. Yeah. Man. You know, but um, yeah, I've, I've always approached sports in general. And like that, that's how I get the best out of myself is playing mad, playing upset. I trick myself into being mad and hateful towards the other players on the opposite side <laughs> of the field, you know? Um, yeah. and, and it's an interesting thing because off the field, I'm not like that at all. You know, I'm, I'm extremely friendly. I want to be, you know, have a good time with everybody and, and boost everybody. But yeah, on that paintball field, man, it's a totally different ball game. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. You got to approach it like that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Let's see, Ty. You got any other questions for our guy for T? Um, yeah, I, I do actually. What are What are your all time oh, favorite you basketball shoes? Ooh, <laughs> you know what? I got a question too. I would say the the penny twos, either the penny Ooh. twos. <laughs> Or the air go, yeah. The air goes. Damn. How many pairs track. of basketball shoes you got? Right. Well, I sold a bunch off because I had to put kids in one of the okay. rooms. That I had to do <laughs> room. Uh, but right now, I probably probably got twenty five. There we go. All right. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It's been awesome watching you and the fam. Um, you guys, you have just the most beautiful little family. We're so happy for you and. Congratulations on, on all the success and everything that you've been doing, brother. It's it's been amazing to uh, you know, grow old alongside you and watch everybody on their journey and, and having fun with this paintball saga that we're on. I appreciate that, man. You guys as well. I'm I'm very fortunate enough to be a little bit older than you guys and being able to watch you guys since you were little kids, you know, knee high to a grasshopper. Shit, come on know. up and you know, <laughs> shoot your way to the top. You know, I, I'm very appreciative of all the relationships that I have, but, you know, having known you guys for so long and Marcelo, you know, being a San Diego kid, you know, Mm -hmm. hanging out at our cribs and, you know, doing stuff and watching you grow and mature, you know, and to the man that you are is it's amazing. And Tyler, you know, really coming up here, you know, and being just unbelievable, you know, from being that tiny little kid, I still see you as the kid that's all on the field in, uh, you know, Denver. Right, yeah. then you shot up like seven feet in <laughs> yeah. a couple of years, blink of an eye. Yeah, you know? yeah. But, I went from like the shortest guy out there to the tallest. Now it's uh, it's been right. crazy. It's been a wild ride. It's been fun, yeah. man. Todd, you're still- the best in the game. Hey, baby, let's <laughs> Appreciate go, it, brother. Todd, are you are you still going to be commentating for Go Sports? I'm not. No. Uh, wow. Stop doing it uh, in uh, Vegas of 2020. Oh, okay, but. Okay. They said that maybe they'll bring me back, um, but just budget okay. stuff, yeah, you yeah, know, sure. uh, 
Dude, their loss. You're the best they're in the loss. business, yeah, dude. 100%. What are you doing? Yeah, you're cash it. money. I love baby. doing it. I yeah. love you, doing it. You understand but, sports. You know how to explain sports. You know, you, you do a great job with broadcasting. So, you know, it kind of coincides with, with coaching as well, right? Got to know how to explain what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully I'll be back up there sometime. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, it's uh, it's tremendous. You know what we got. Um, we're building a lot in the paintball community right now, and we're excited to have this first tournament get underway here in a couple weeks. Um, what are you guys doing? Yeah, baby. What are you guys <laughs> doing? <laughs> yeah, this weekend, you guys are probably traveling somewhere and practicing somebody. I'd imagine. Yeah. I'm gonna go. Me and Texas Hammer are gonna meet up in San Antonio. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're gonna go play yeah. Archie and the Boys, right nice. out at. Uh, X Factor Paintball Park in San Antonio. Go get a good one in against uh, X Factor before the events. Nice. Um, all the guys uh, are leaving to Texas tomorrow. They'll be flying out to Houston. Yep. And then I'll meet up with them on Friday and then practice X Factor all weekend. Awesome. And, and eat delicious barbecue. Mm. There we go. Yes. <laughs> mm. Velvet the Taco. That's the Ooh. jam out there. I'm telling you. Velvet, Velvet Taco. Taco. Okay. Yeah, if you've been out there and haven't had it, whew. That's, that's why I'm kid. headed straight there. Uh, that's my first thing I'm doing. <laughs> Sounds amazing. Heck yeah. Awesome, brother. Todd, thank you so much, man. A pleasure having you on the show. Honestly, just really good to catch up with you and talk to you this much. Yeah. Um, you're the man. You're a legend. Uh, the listeners are going to get a ton of value from listening to this episode. And um, like I said yes, before, sir. brother, you have a seat here anytime. In the meantime, where can people keep up with you, your company, everything you're, you're doing? Uh, you can follow me on uh, Instagram. I really mostly just use Instagram. I don't really Facebook that much, but um, Weapons is my newest brand. Uh, we've been doing that for a couple of years now. Um, I actually got my own name back on Instagram. You can follow me at Todd Martinez um, and then Raza Paintball, um, the company that we started 16 years ago, uh, yeah. Raza Paintball on Instagram. So that's where you nice. find me. I never know, I'm, you know, kind of flipping around, you know, putting stuff in different places. So, yeah. you know, tune in Dude. and uh, you can also just call me, you know, yeah. Mike Jones. You know what I'm saying? Mike Jones. <laughs> Mike Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Raza, Hell that yeah. what a legendary uh, lineage that is. I'll never forget being a kid watching, you know, Dynasty playing Aftermath. Bob's Iron Man would come out there to your field out there. That was a great park. Raza was yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, that was an amazing no spot. Appreciate it, man. Thank you guys very much. I had a blast. Yes, sir. Thank you. Hey, we'll you. see you soon. Be safe, Tizzle. Peace. I don't know what to say, everybody. That episode did not disappoint. Todd is truly the man. What an awesome, awesome individual. Always so fun to talk to, so animated, such a great character and great personality in our sport with tons of knowledge and just fantastic stories. Uh, PTG family, we really hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, we would really like to give a special thank you to our co-producers. We have Paul, George Jocelyn, my man, Garrett Hobbs, Delmont Yunin, uh, Christopher Tucker, Christian, Reginald, Cameron Clifford, Brian Reese, and Carl Sprental. Thank you guys so much, PTG fam, for being part of this process, being co-producers of the show and helping us um, continue to do this. We really are trying to bring you guys the best of the best content we will be having a GOAT team meeting here next week, so stay tuned. If you guys are not signed up or members yet, you want to make sure to go and do that. You can head over to ptgpaintball.com and check out the Patreon. It has all of the different tiers there. We do a special monthly meeting for uh, the GOAT section, the GOAT group, so check it out if you guys would like. And um, other than that, thank you guys so much from the bottom of our hearts. We really appreciate you guys tuning in with us and hanging out and having a good time, enjoying these amazing conversations. That was just another fantastic one. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure if we're going to do another episode before uh, the NXL Florida event. I think we're shifting all of our focus here over the next week into training practice and some other stuff we have going on with BKI. Um, also, if you guys are not BKI members, you should definitely get in there. We have tons of field breakdowns and things like that to prepare you for the NXL uh, Florida Open. So again, everybody, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for being part of the community and uh, we'll see you very, very soon. <laughs>